Universal Pictures presents Bankruptcy. Now <laughs> <laughs> you can see the, uh, the universal. Uh, he says he'll be getting on shortly, but um, so functionally at the moment, everyone is uh, out wherever they are, you know, potentially coming from. Okay. I'm coming from that away. <laughs> <laughs> um, throughout your travels, uh, one night as sleep takes you, each and every one of you, uh, you're greeted with a dream. Your eyes open to d- a deep darkness. As they adjust, you realize that you're staring into the expanse of a night sky devoid of stars. Sound just a sec. Yes. to it um bah, bah, bah. sitting up you find yourself in the midst of a glade surrounded by ominous gnarled trees whose branches seem to be reaching out towards your very essence a flicker of light from behind you catches your attention turning you turning you find yourself face to face with a rotting corpse of what seems to be a man it is adorned in a shambles of broken chainmail armor a long short long sword sheathed at its side a shield worn on its back its tattered tabard is streaked in a ruddy reddish brown stain uh, from a scarred opening near its heart and bears a strange symbol of two black birds facing inwards towards a stylized R ringed in red. An oversized left pauldron bears the symbol of a blue wave uh, circling, up on, a, circling on, up on the sinister to encircle a single eight-pointed golden star all on a circle of white. Its grim, sardonic visage twists while it cocks his head, studying you. What's left of its lips stretch back, revealing cracked, rotted teeth as it speaks in little more than a hushed whisper. Where I failed my team long ago, they succeeded in their mission. But the darkness has begun to creep back into this world. Seek the singing sword in. Its words trail off in a short rattle. The sky grows bright as uh, streaks of flame, one, then another, then another, then there are hundreds, perhaps thousands trailing before your eyes. Darkness gathers before you, your world grows still. You awaken to the new morning in your respective places. Okay, that's extremely creepy. <laughs> right. Uh, just out of slight nervousness, my character is going to go ahead and uh, hold tightly onto that uh, that uh, silver skull he has. Okay. Are we together at this point? Or no? Not currently. You're all out and about within the world. Okay. I'm gonna assume I ate something that didn't agree with me and go back to sleep. <laughs> Peasant food and all that. Overall, you're able to, to get back to sleep, but every time that you attempt to drift off to sleep, that same vision comes back to you. And you said it's. You said that it's. Uh, we wait to the to a new day. Correct. All right. At this point, I'm likely still on the road, but um, so I'm just gonna pack up my little camp and keep making my way toward that town. Okay. Because uh, that's basically just the direction that uh, I've been led to believe I need to walk. Okay. 
try not to reveal too much yet, guys. <laughs> Ooh. So, so are we in the the city yet? Or not are we yet. on our way to it. Yeah, you're on your way to it. I'm going to as well continue making my way towards towards town based on the uh, the vision I had from from another source that is leading me to here. Alrighty. Everyone doing the same, I assume? Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah, once I've had a proper sleep, I mean, I'm not going to start my day off earlier than I have to. <laughs> well, you're on a vision quest. And you're on a vision quest. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just or you out just here. Don't know it yet. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, like Lou told me, cash rules, everything around me, dollar dollar bills, y'all. That's what I'm out here for. Perfect. So some of you take to the call swiftly, having already been traveling. Others take time to prepare and then begin the trek. Eventually, you all find your way to Raven's Bluff, the city of adventurers, and with it, within it, to the Singing Sword Inn. Uh, for some of you, the journey takes weeks, yet others, months. Uh, during your trip, you're able to find the meaning of the symbol, specifically that it is the crest of the city of Raven's Bluff. Um, you arrive in the city and are able to get easy directions to said singing sword inn. Uh, there, as you approach, you find others that are likewise headed towards the inn. And if you guys want to uh, describe yourselves, since you're kind of coming in from various different meeting areas, go for it. All right, I guess I'll start. So I'm first alphabetically. Uh, I'm a five foot ten and very thickly built uh, man. Dark brown eyes, tan skin, at least the skin that you can see, because my body's covered in unusually thick hair. Um, you see. Uh, my clothes are more utility than comfort or style. A lot of it's just uh, scrapped leather that was sewn together. Uh, and you notice strapped to my back is a very large two-handed maul. Uh, one end of it is the head of a bear with its mouth uh, partially open. And the other end is uh, of the head is as if it were the two front paws and the claw, tips of the claws come out just enough that the points are uh, weaponized on the other side. All right. Uh, I am a, uh, a five and a half foot tall uh, half elf uh, girl, uh, maybe in her, her early 20s. Um, very travel stained and uh, kind of obsessively clutching at a small leather bound book in my left hand. Uh, I am a <clears throat> oh, four and a half foot tall, uh, 70 or so pound uh, canker. Kind of black ravens and uh, kind of not black feathers, but uh, more kind of brownish, dark, dark brown, almost black uh, feathers. Uh, I've got a got a little piece of, of what looks like coal that I keep on a necklace uh, around. Around my neck. Nice. Oh, so that leaves me next, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just plug like it. I'm, I'm trying to make the uh, the character because I forgot to transfer it from the paper I have to a digital version for the GM until we started the game. <clears throat> I'm on the ball. <laughs> I am essentially a very very slim, high elf, white hair, uh, 
distinguished looking. I wear very fancy silks with a fancy cloak. I have a very fancy longbow and fancy rapier. And everything about me just screams pompous douchebag. Mm. Also, I have a uh, symbol of my noble house emblazoned in huge, huge on my cloak, on my pendants, on pretty much anywhere that I could fit an insignia. There's a picture of mine, which is two roses crossed like swords. That's my family emblem. I'm just picturing a NASCAR jacket. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. That we bad. Don't just, the <laughs> just the one big one on the cloak. But yeah, like if I have like a lapel or something where I could put an insignia, the insignia is there. Gotcha. Like it's everywhere. And he is uh, very much what you would expect a noble to look like. Also, if it matters, he's around 300 years old, so he's not young. You don't look a day over 120. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in care. Well, it's still yeah. rude. I think that uh, then leaves Froskar. All right. I'm a, like, eight-foot-tall Goliath covered in white scales with blue face paint that cover like across his eyes. Very muscular. Uh, carries a two-handed club, but doesn't wear any armor. I love the fact that two of us standing side by side, people will think that you're the barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. You're all barbarians to me. I would ask if that's the elf or the noble in you, but it's definitely the It's both. <laughs> There's lesser elves in this world, too, you know. To be fair... Not even, all of them have my breeding and pedigree. To be fair, even, like, the lowliest elf sees other races as peasants. It's what comes from living long enough to know they're better than you. All right, so you all see each other outside the door to the uh, Singing Sword Inn, and the plaque outside also shows uh, the Sword Table's Dining Lounge. It's kind of one plaque over the other in the same bit of wood. Speed 30. Yep, I, I'm just going to enter, and the first thing I'm going to do is take out a handkerchief, put it over my mouth, and make really rude comments about the stink. <laughs> and then I'm, gonna, then I'm going to wave over one of the uh, serving people and be like, you, you, peasant girl, come here. I need a table that's been washed at least within the last hour, if you can <laughs> find such a table here. So as you enter, uh, what you see is the... Uh... The bottom floor of this is the Sword Tables Dining Lounge. Um, effectively, there are six large round tables, all kind of in pie-shaped sections, um, engraved with kind of uh, a sword at each of the seating spots. Each one sits about 12 people. Um, of the people that are in here, there are actually only three. Um, one is an elderly old man sitting all by himself, kind of at the back table in the corner. Um, another is um, what looks to be um, an armored humanoid. Uh, it's wearing effectively a full balaclava, uh, so you can't really make out its face, but it has uh, blue eyes and kind of palish features. Um, and then the barkeep that uh, is standing, obviously, behind the bar. Um, as you walk in, he's like, they've all been cleaned. No one's uh, actually been in as of this morning. Uh, right now, it's only about 11 a.m. Good. Give me the nicest table, somewhere against with my back to a wall, and uh, preferably away from the smelliest of the peasants. Certainly. You, you can sit anywhere you please. Anything we can bring for you, sir? Yes. Bring me the finest sherry that you have. Sherry. <laughs> can do. He uh, starts collecting through the bottles, looking through things. 
and about a couple minutes later comes over with a small snifter of sherry for you. Oh, excellent. Thank you. You of may course. leave. And, <laughs> and I wave him away. away. <laughs> um, are we sitting near each other at this point, or are we just kind of... I don't know. Be sitting near me. Purely up to you guys. So far, uh, only Lord Draho has entered. Oh, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enter as well. Um, and I'm just going to find like a, a spot away from everybody uh, and then start pouring through the, the book that I'm carrying. Okay. So in here, additionally, besides the uh, bar and the tables, there is a bounty board. Um, and beyond that, the walls are fairly bare. Um, this seems to be a moderately low scale kind of bar. Seen better times. Uh, Ark, who's never been to like a city, uh, is just sort of emulating what everyone else is doing. So he sees two people go inside, so he goes inside to uh, can't help but overhear the elf uh, conversation. And having heard that you can sit where you like, uh, he just kind of finds a, his own table and sits down because he's not exactly sure if he's welcome to sit with anyone else. Okay. If he can read faces, I definitely have a face that says, do not approach. <laughs> you have a personality that says, do not approach. <laughs> um, I will go in and use my mimicry skill to make myself sound like Lord Elfie Pants over there and, <laughs> um, and, and say that, that I want uh, a clean table. Okay. Um, and, uh, and Do you sound like a pompous elf? It, he specifically sounds exactly like you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, ignore the smell of my farts because they smell like roses. Uh, Ark, Ark, Ark raises an eyebrow and just kind of chuckles. I'm going to flag him down. Oh, over here, please. Finally, someone of some distinction in class in this rat-infested city. Oh, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a Kenku is. Uh, I will go and, and sit uh, with, with our elf acquaintance uh, and, and continue to, to make myself sound like him. If you repeat everything I tell you as I talk to you on and on and on about my family, you're going to become my best friend. Because it becomes <laughs> apparent to me that you care about what I'm saying and you really listen. Mm -hmm. Yes, very listening. Much listening, wow. <laughs> All I want is people to believe that I'm as great as I think I am. I'm going to, to kind of... Uh... Uh, encourage encourage the elf to, to talk at length about things of, of all sorts. Uh, I mean, I, I will literally just ramble on for as long as anyone will let me about my ancestry, about my position in the court, how I'm the hunt master at myth Draenor and how i've held the position for close to a hundred years but i had to step away from my family's estate and leave the city um to see the world because i felt i wasn't fully uh embracing the world outside of my my sheltered area and i'm also going to say if you ever meet someone from myth Draenor, make sure not to bring up my name um they, they tend to be very jealous of my wealth and influence in the city. All right. I'm going to raise a sarcastic eyebrow with this. <laughs> I'm just kind of sitting at my table uh, because I'm not exactly sure how a place like this works. <laughs> I just see people sitting down. Yeah. So I'm just sort of awkwardly scanning the room. No, I grab myself my own table and light up a smoke. I mean, you're real playing very well. <laughs> very immersive. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I guess I'm just going to continue listening and, and making uh, making note of, of the interesting things that, uh, that are we the only five people here? Uh, it's you five, um, an elderly old man sitting in a, at a table by himself, kind of in the corner. Um, another guy that's uh, wearing chainmail and a balaclava, um, and then the barkeep. Barkeep, do you have any water? Yes, yes, of course. Um, just like water? like ice cold water. <laughs> can do, sir. Can do. Um, he heads to the back. You hear kind of uh, some muffled conversation. And then he comes back out with a glass of water with chunks of ice in it that have obviously been um, picked at from a large chunk of ice. Thank you, Barkeep. Of course. Can you tell me about any of these citizens you have here? Well, uh, Eno there in the corner, he's actually the owner. Um, he points out the, the old man. Um, other chap is a, a younger adventurer, um, and he kind of looks around the rest of the room. Haven't seen the rest of these before. Um, Y'all look like, you know, the adventuring type. Uh, sadly, the, the boards these days are a lot less full than they used to be. And he points out the bounty board. That is one empty bounty board. I have to say so myself. Yep. Single post. Oh, you were about there. to say, I do declare, and I was about to start <laughs> cracking the fuck up. I was about to. Just <laughs> southern gentleman on us. <laughs> Look at the Goliath gentleman. I do declare. <laughs> southern gentleman Goliath. Why has no one done that? That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Exciting, Goliath. I'll go to the bounty board after taking up so I get the cold water. All right. Uh, and that is what's listed again? on there. I'll I'll look at it too, simply because I uh, I'm getting the concept of what a bounty is. This is kind of a new idea for him. Okay. What is this in called again? Uh, this it's is the. It's called a bounty board. <laughs> This is the Singing Sword Inn, but the bottom level itself is the Sword Tables Lounge. I really wish I'd have remembered to do this character sheet before game. <laughs> do, do kobolds really have ears to take? That's a good question. Wait, yeah, kobolds have ears. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we talking? Are we talking wolf kobolds or are we talking lizard kobolds? Are, are, are we talking wild kobolds or are we talking? <laughs> well, because I think in the older D and D editions, I don't know if the new one it's for sure lizards, but in the older ones it used to be wolves. So I don't know what we. Yeah, have. it's for sure lizards. Yeah. Okay. Per five e, they're they're quote unquote little dragons. Um, so so while they're checking out the bounty board, I'm gonna go talk to the the barkeeper and ask him if he knows anything about places of learning in this city. Sure, um, a variety of them. It depends on really what you're looking for. Uh, I'm looking for information of the arcane variety. Well, then you'd probably want to uh, reach out to the Wizards College. Um, they they have basically everything under the sun that you might find in the area there. Um, each portion of the college, it's kind of split up into its own school. Okay, um, and I'll just ask for directions on how to get there. Yep, uh, he points you at the correct kind of path that'll lead you there. Okay, cool. Uh, then I guess I'll just go go uh, sit down again because I'm not really sure why uh, I'm supposed to be here yet. Okay. Door, but the main door. I'm going to feel very stifled and kind of venture out into this for a little bit. Uh, maybe search for a park or someplace quiet. Okay. Um, you're able to, you're, you're in the altar side district. Um, there are several parks that you can kind of wander your way towards. I'm just going to 
find the nearest one and, and kind of roost for a little bit. Okay. To bid adieu to our illustrious okay. self before I leave. So the, a, a deep bow and, and a perfect mimic of, of uh, day two kind sir. Um, uh, as you're about to walk out, the, the old man kind of waves at you to come on over. Okay. I will go and see what he needs, I suppose. Okay. Um, so as you walk over, he, he kind of squints and looks you up and down. Haven't seen many of your kind here. Um, where are you from? I'm going to click my beak a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting place. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, to be honest, I never figured out where I grew up at. <laughs> um, I just I, I came from the from the woods recently. So. Wow! And you want to have a seat and, and chat a bit? What what brings you to town? Was a, a friend of mine told me that there were interesting things here. Oh, well, looking for anything in in particular, son. Ah. Understandable. Understandable. Well, um, plenty of places here in the city that you can find like that. Um, of course, the inn upstairs is is also quiet, so if you you need a room, you go ahead and let, it, let the barkeep there, Titus, know, and we'll set you up, okay? Okay. Thank you. And is there anything that you need from me? No, no, you're just the first one of you I think i uh, ever seen, so I, I just kind of wanted to say hi. Uh, he reaches out his old hand. Uh, I'm Eno, Eno Van Richter. Most people just call me Richter. I'm uh, going to say my name, which is uh, called... It's, it's a, I make a sound of, of wind rustling leaves in the tree. People call me Russell. Oh, well, nice to meet you, Russell. Nice to meet you. And you as well. Well, you come on back. This seems like a very interesting place. And, and well, thank you. Uh, I haven't owned it very long, but what it, I'm it's definitely a, a nice place. We, we have an interesting confluence of, of things happening here. <laughs> <laughs> that we I, I will be back. All righty. Seen the uh, bird leave and talk to the older gentleman, having read the, uh, the post there. I'm going to walk over to uh, uh, Richter mm -hmm. and uh, say, um, excuse me, uh, sir. Oh, my. You're kind of different, too. Have, have a seat, son. Have a seat. What can, what can I do for you today? Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm not used to this type of setting. So, uh, That's okay. We get all types. Not nearly as much as we used to, but it'll hmm. come back. Well, I certainly hope so. That's your, uh, well, what's the word? Business. Uh, well, I, I was wondering if you uh, would happen to be able to tell me how to get to the Raven's Crest Academy. Academy? Well, yeah, it's uh, uh, just on the north end of the altar side. Um, somewhat uh, larger building, um, kind of in a U shape. It takes a second to remember the shape of a U. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I, I can read, I just don't do it often. So, <laughs> so, uh, so what, what brings your type here to town? Uh, well, um, I've been pursuing a bit of a vision quest. Oh, do tell. Those are always good. Uh, well, uh, years ago, when I was younger, um, 
I began seeing visions in, in my dreams of uh, a bear spirit. Mm -hmm. And it showed me calamitous things, just bad things that may happen. And it had, I would have these visions every night. And it, I, I grew to understand that I was being led somewhere. So I would simply follow where the spirit was guiding me as best as I could. And I've arrived here. And just, just before I came into town, I had a different dream. It's not, not the same. It showed me the actual the symbol above the door, uh, the, the symbol for the town. It's, uh, it's not what I'm used to. Sure. But I feel that this is where I'm supposed to be at now. Uh, I don't quite understand, but I, I trust that I will find out. So what, at what was this, this new point, vision I've like? kind of heard him talking about this, and I'm going to kind of start making my way over. Okay. Yeah, I'm also not used to having to have an indoor voice, so this isn't exactly quiet. <laughs> Definitely eavesdropping. Oh, this is some juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get up and approach the bar because I've been angrily waiting for them to come and refill my glass, and they've been too busy <laughs> talking amongst their peasant like folk. That is true. So I'm going to go demand service right now. Or they're not getting a single penny out of me for anything <laughs> in this establishment. Does I'm going to uh, the shit out of this. Yeah, I was going to say, did your elf have the Karen haircut? He's gone when this is done. <laughs> so uh, the bartender uh, apologizes profusely. I I'm so sorry, sir. I, I, I didn't realize you were ready for more. Um, next one is certainly on the house. Let, let me get that for you right now. And he, he grabs that same bottle and, and begins repouring that snifter for you. Thank you. Now, what is all this over here about kobolds? Something about they've been causing trouble? I would surely be happy to give my assistance in this matter so that you peasant folk can continue to uh, drink cheap beer, I assume, is what you do all day? I'm, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to judging eyebrow at that. Look at Victor <laughs> and go, is everyone here like this? Uh, not generally, Sonny, not generally. Um, so you, you get all types that come into the city. Uh, uh, we used to have so many more, but uh, it's it's nice to see new young blood coming in. Mm. Um, bartender um, looking at Lord Draho. Uh, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Sarada, I really don't know. Uh, it's the first bounty that we've seen come in in months and hasn't been picked up uh, in, in the last 10 days. It's just kind of been sitting there. Clearly, I'll you can't off deal with your own problems. Hard. I will take care of it for you. Anyone that cares to come along, follow, please. I could always use the extra lackeys. What? Oh, I want to join. <laughs> Good, oh, excellent. Yeah. You can grab my bag, and I'm going to hand you my bag. You call oh, this a left. bag? This is a tiny sack. It exactly is. Exactly <laughs> what she said. <laughs> yeah, I overheard the very loud uh, bear man. I was a little ways down the street, and I, I heard him talking about the... Uh... I, I'm going to kind of lean closer to Richter, mostly because I'm embarrassed that I don't know what the word is. And just, what's a lackey? Uh, somebody that follows someone else around does all their stuff for them because they're too fucking lazy. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> the good thing my intelligence is really low. Me having worked from a tribal society where everyone has to work or they die, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but out, out of a sense of like sort of pity and just morbid fascination, I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna. Just, uh, I need to learn more about this. I'll, I'll, I'll go. With you. All right. Well, you, you do come back and tell me that story sometime, okay? Oh, absolutely. Alrighty. Um, uh, so at this point, I'm gonna kind of uh, get up and and 
kind of hurry after the the bear man um and kind of try to catch his attention man bear man yes <laughs> <laughs> you you saw that vision too uh which one i've seen two i the the one with the the meteors and and the dead man yes how, how did we have the same vision did you did you ever have dreams about a bear I looked kind of puzzled for a second. No. Then I don't. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, then I'm not sure. Maybe it's what. Maybe it's a form of uh, magic, perhaps. Like. The power that our shamans build in my tribe. Maybe. This is very curious. Well, I'm coming with you. All right. Interesting, at least. The more, the merrier. And then I'll, I'll kind of extend my hand to to Bear Man. Uh, my name's Navara. Well, I, I, my big, very hairy, <laughs> beady hand goes up. I am oh, And used to being kind of big, comparatively, I, I do kind of... You can tell that I'm holding back how much I'm, I'm holding your hand when I shake. Uh, can you say your name again? I didn't catch it. Ark. Ark? Ark. All righty, so everyone's off to Raven's Crest then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. I'm going to just kind of make the same sort of uh, question of, of, you know, I've, I've heard multiple people have had the same vision that I have as well. And obviously, others were more forthcoming about that information than I was. But <laughs> <laughs> he completely wrote it off as something in the local food, so it's not surprising everyone had the same dream I did. So I'm going to walk next to Navarro because she's the only one to like introduce herself to me. And I'm going to say, uh, ask a question. Sure. What's an academy? It's a place where people go to learn things. Oh, okay. Quit giving reasonable answers. Start fucking with them. <laughs> is, that in char- is that in character? <laughs> no, no. I am far be- far above speaking with any of you unless directly spoken to. But that, that, yeah, that checks. I was going to say, I'm only a half-elf, so I'm not a total dick. <laughs> well, the fact that you're a half-elf and the bird is obviously a noble on par with my elegance... Um, you're about the only two I would really communicate with openly without being yes. addressed first. Yes, yes. yes. The, 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 the bird is, is, in fact, so noble, it does not bother itself with actual language. No, <laughs> it understands fully what I tell it. And it speaks to me in such an elegant and sophisticated manner. That there's no doubt it's of my same breeding stock. It's at least my rank, if not a little lower. In social standing, I'm going to 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 keep up that uh, illusion for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the long game. <laughs> uh, canonically, my character did grow up in urchin. So. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> but but you're but you're a bird, so it doesn't two different. Climates. Yes, yes. Not not the sea and, and yeah. So I'm, I'm going to imitate very very strongly the uh, the uh, 
mannerisms and, and tone of, of voice of, of Lord Dryho. But can uh, I make an insight check to see if I understand that he's making fun of him? But in a slightly mocking tone. Sure. Make your roll. First I of voluntarily all, fail the roll to determine that. <laughs> so I want you guys to know that the first roll of this campaign was a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Seems anyway, completely are, honest. <laughs> which is about right. It's about right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> University of Navarro is like, are, are those two twins? I, I can't tell. No, no, you, you poor sweet summer child. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of like pat him on the shoulder. To paraphrase one of my favorite voice actors, I have an intelligence of eight. I know, I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am so mad. I just filled out this digital character sheet and realized I didn't download it first, so I have to refill out everything. Oh. I'm about to I'm about to see if I can screen cap this. How the fuck do you screen cap again? I'm so computer illiterate. Print screen. Print screen. Mm-hmm. There is a button for that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Print screen on, on every keyboard for like ever. <laughs> I never knew that. I always thought it was something weird you got to do in the settings. Nope. Oh, it's like control all F9. I ain't believing that. Last time somebody told me that shit, I can... I, Alt F Ford out of a game. <laughs> I'm falling for that bullshit again. You can also Windows Shift S and open a screen cap. Up, to... down, up, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. You are now level 20. <laughs> <laughs> Windows S did not do the but, but it's screen. All, it's all levels of, Windows it's all levels plus of Shift plus S. Oh, Windows, 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 S. Windows plus Shift plus S. Hmm. Oh, that's the snipping tool. I, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I use the snipping tool like all the time at work, and I never thought that I could use it here. I don't know why. It's because you're a noble that's used to having lackeys. Mm-hmm. This is true. Yeah, yeah. A noble wouldn't do his own snip tool. That's right. A noble has people. For you're a no, you mean I have to touch it? All right, so I assume we find our way to... Uh, what is it, Raven's Crest Academy? Correct. So um, when you get there, it's a, a rather large kind of a palatial setting within the city. Um, five-story building. Um, as you move in, and it's beautifully manicured lawn, um, statues, fountains, kind of the whole nine yards of extravagance. Um, coming up to the front stairway, it's large, Oaken double doors. Um, they they are swung open during this uh, kind of springtime, beautiful air that the city is experiencing currently. Um, coming into the main foyer, you're greeted uh, with a, a desk and an attendant behind it. Oh, hello. Um, how can I help you today? Uh, we're here about the pool ball. Oh, yes, uh, you'll, you'll want to speak uh, to the rector. Um, right this way, I'll, I'll lead you right in. Um, so she takes you down a, a couple hallways, uh, left and a right, and then into a uh, rather large kind of study office space. Um, wall-to-wall books, just kind of ceiling to floor, um, cover the entire area. A uh, large rug underneath the desk looks rather expensive. Um, the, the rectress herself is, uh, kind of a tallerish middle-aged woman, um, blonde hair with, uh, some streaks of white showing through, um, glasses are tipped down a little bit as she's reading a book and she kind of looks up as you guys come in. Oh, um, yes. What can I do for you? I, I guess I'm the face of the group right now. <laughs> uh, no, I 
she clearly was addressing me, the person of class and sus substance. So I'm going to approach and very casually say, I'm here to do something about kobolds or something or other. I'll oh. leave this to my lackey. And then I'm going to point at the, uh, I mean, literally just wave generally in the direction of all of you. So now somebody else can take over. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Right. So um, the, there's a space that the city has uh, deemed something that Raven's Crest was capable of buying. Uh, it's a small town uh, about a day's journey from here called Sable Ridge. Uh, it was abandoned during the war and unfortunately has had um, a bit of a cobalt incident in that area. Uh, we're looking for a group of adventurers, looks like you're it, that uh, can go ahead and head on out there, deal with those kobolds, and for every ear you bring back, we'll go ahead and pay you uh, five silver. Well, that's a mighty fine deal. Do you have a map? Oh, certainly. And uh, she opens up a drawer, pulls out a map, sets it down for you. Do you need a copy? That would be dandy. Ah, wonderful. Um, she pulls out another piece of paper, kind of sets it over the map, waves her hand over it, and it copies that map, and she hands it to you. All right. Do me one more favor and point at the map to where we are from here to there. <laughs> um, so she points out where Raven's Bluff is, and let me grab the Faerun map. By the way, when she did the uh, the magical Xeroxing spell, I kind of just looked like super impressed. So this is Raven's Bluff here, and it'd be right about there. What? Okay. Uh, okay. Do any uh, idea how many kobolds there are? Uh, it seems to be a, a rather sizable amount. Um, the local city watch was unwilling uh, to head out there and handle this themselves, even with the offer of, uh, shall we say, redistribution of assets in order to handle this problem. Uh, they've got better things to do in these very slow days. When she said redistribution of assets, you see me kind of like look up and you see me sort of like mouth the words back to myself. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain right. that he means getting paid. No, no, like I figure it out. I just like, right. <laughs> but, so, um, any questions, anything that uh, you all need before you head out? Has anyone taken off on this contract and not come back no not as of yet you're the first applicants hmm. do you know who put out the contract we did okay specifically i did uh, I, I believe that the bounty said something about uh money up front oh yes my apologies and she kind of quickly counts out the five of you opens up another drawer with a pouch pulls out 50 gold Sets it into uh, stacks of five or uh, stacks of ten for each of you. And uh, there you are. Um, obviously, another set of that when you come back. And um, five silver per cobalt here you bring. I'll take this deal and we will return. Wonderful. We, we look forward to having that place cleansed so that the academy may expand. Uh, just out of curiosity, what exactly do you study here at Raven's Crest Academy? Well, specifically, we're a uh, instructional academy for um, lords and ladies who want their children to become adventurers. Hmm. I'm going to very quietly say, who would choose this life willingly? Everyone who might want money. There are simpler ways to gain money. You ask your father. Well, this is <laughs> while this is true, life of adventure brings not only wealth but experience and glory in a, in a perfectly <laughs> uh, 
simple tone, the same as Lord Dreho, I'm going to say, just be born with money and then chortle. <laughs> he gets it. Plus, we're here to help out the helpful people of this town. That's the most important thing. Metropolitan, but you're correct. What she said. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm just kind of like picking up the, the coins and kind of looking at them for a second, contemplating the visions that I kept getting before the one that brought me here. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to say out loud, well, it's not the end of the world, but I guess I have to start somewhere. I don't have much <laughs> but all right well if there's nothing else um feel free to show yourselves out and as soon as you've completed the task come on back so how much gold did we get up front again uh 10 per player 10 piece. 10 awesome mm-hmm. let me add that to my substantial coin purse <laughs> the one i'm holding no just kidding no, no, no. My coin purse. My father always said a gentleman is never far from his purse. <laughs> if I may ask a metagame question. Sure. I'm not going to ask this in person. Um, if you want to share, how much gold does your character actually have? Right now? 35. I'm a noble. <laughs> My barbarian <laughs> has more money than you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he does because I didn't do any, like equipment purchasing i just took the standard 25 right i did that thing where it like gives you like you can have this or that and it's like well if you get option b you can still get the first thing and then have more money left over once you sell the thing and no, i didn't go through that crap the point is i have enough money for myself 10 gold is good enough for my living conditions it's too warm down here <laughs> I mean, my my life savings just went up by like by like thirty percent. So like I'm good. That that's nice. It seems like a pretty straightforward job. So okay, I got you my character now. Perfect. Pedro, so I'll download that uh, post game. Yeah, it's uh, three pages. I use the snipping tool because that was the only simple way I could do it. No, oh, not a problem. I'll uh, convert it to PDF. Good job. Okay. Um, so are we leaving right away or do we need to supply? I mean, what do you need to go? You need to go f- kill the kobolds. We walk into the woods. Assumably, okay. they're out there naked, dancing around a fire. And we start shooting them in the face. I would like to go buy a quarterstaff before we leave. Okay. Yeah, you don't have much trouble finding uh, somewhere that sells large sticks. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you could have just gone out into the woods and made one. Cheaper. I am not that handy. <laughs> made one, as in, find a decently straight stick and pick it up. <laughs> Is there any other way? <laughs> Go, 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 to, go to ye old uh, Home Depot and get a dollar. <laughs> All right. Any other preparations before you guys hit the road? Are uh, you going today I, or waiting till tomorrow? It's uh, probably, what, about noon? Yep. Yeah, I say we go for it. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay to leave. They said it was yeah. how, how long to get there? About, uh, a day. about a day's travel. What? Okay. I've got an adventurer's pack. That should have everything I need. Right. And uh, so just let us know if we encounter anything on the road. Yep. So um, for the most part, uh, your your first portion of the day goes uh, rather smooth. Um, it's a bit of a trek, um, being that you don't have any horses or anything. Um, but at about the four-hour interval... Um, up ahead on the trail, you see um, three carts, three horses, but no one else seems to be around. Hmm. Three carts and three horses, and no one's tending them? Correct. 
I would like to uh, move toward the horses. Do they seem calm? Uh, they seem fairly agitated. Agitated? I would like to try to calm them down with an animal handling check. All right, let me pop this up real quick. All right. There we are. Oh, that brings me back to the early 90s. <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> All right, and we'll go ahead and set you guys down here real quick. When he starts approaching it, I'm going to step over to somewhere where there's some loose ground and use my cantrip mold earth to create a small five foot wall to lean behind and draw my bow. Okay. Uh, let me know when you want my numbers. All right, so they are there. Um, I assume you are moving forward? Yes. Um, slowly, like nothing in my hands, like to show like I'm not a threat. Okay. Um, so it w so second roll <laughs> is uh, an 18 plus 3, so 21. Okay. Uh, so this draft horse here will kind of come wandering towards you. Uh, the other two are a little bit further away and are headed in opposite directions. Oh, so they're not even attached to the carts. Correct. Okay. Um, does it still have like its uh, it, it, uh, bridle on, like its bit and everything? It does. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a uh, 16. 16. Um, from where you're at with the close horse, you can see that uh, the, the bits of leather that would attach it to the carts themselves um, have been cut. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to see if I can perceive anything like about the area of like, is there any like sign of battle? Uh, that sort of thing. Sure. Give me a roll. Uh, 11. Um, from this distance, you can't see too much, um, but there are some kind of red stains up the road. Uh, I'm going to start working my way forward. Yeah, I'm okay. going to cautiously approach as well. I'm going to kind of uh, stay behind that bush there. Uh, I'm going to try to walk the horse back toward the carts as, as we're approaching. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to stick close to Ark. And I'm hoping that that gives the other horses the impression that we're cool. So this horse will be next to you then. Um, these ones are still kind of working like, their way down. You know, I'm going to like edit and everything like that as we're going up. Okay. I'm going to move forward to where the bird is and just sit next to him and then put up my little wall of dirt and draw my bow and prepare an arrow. Okay. I'll walk up the road. With As the... To, I'm looking for, like, any signs of maybe uh, what did this or maybe just tracks or something. So... Okay. Um, can... At the point that you get about this close with said horse and these ones start working their ways around towards you. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me another perception check. Uh, natural 20. Uh, All right. Which brings the total to 23. So, so I'm definitely using this dice for the rest of the game. <laughs> um, so what you see, as soon as that adds in, perfect, are some kobolds hidden in these bushes here. I, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, hold my hand, like, sort of to my side with my palm open. Then reach for one of my hand axes. Mm -hmm. Wait, about, about how far away am I, am I from the cobalt to the right? About 20 feet. 
Monifi? Yeah, pull out. Actually, I'll uh, yeah, pull out one of my hand axes and chuck it at him. All right. Um, go ahead and make him attack roll. It's daylight, uh, right? It is. Okay. okay. Uh, that is an 18 plus 5, so 23. I, I like this deep one. Let's see, that is cobalt 2. So I'm assuming that hits. That should. There it is. AC 12, so yes. I was going to say, if 23 does not hit at level 1, we are in trouble. All right. Oh, and of course, minimum damage. Uh, since I'm not raging, that's only four damage. Four damage? Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go ahead and just assume since he's... I, I don't know if I've seen it or not, but I'm just going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at whatever he was throwing at. Yeah, All right. I, I, I was trying to make it like obvious to them that I was pulling out my axe so they knew to be ready, but I tried to make it to where like the kobolds cool didn't know I knew they were there. Sounds good. Um, go ahead and pitch that uh, Eldritch Blast. Uh, that was really bad. I'm going to go with eight. Eight. That will unfortunately not hit. Anybody else with uh, long range want in on this initial I can, round? but do I even know what they're shooting at? Because sure um, do. Go, I mean, go you ahead heard, and... you heard a ah, when I hit it. Yep. So yeah, go yeah, ahead and uh, give a... One. Give me a perception check to see if uh, you saw where in the bush it hit. Okay. You, you want to roll that since I don't have dice on me. I don't know where I left them. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm there's not your seeing. natural one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he just likes chucking axes at trees. And that the trees yelp? I didn't hear a yelp. <laughs> I'm going to roll a perception check to see if I notice it. Go for it. 19. Yep, that'll do it. All right. Can I ray of frost the cobalt? You sure can. Okay. I'll roll a perception. 13, does that succeed? It does. All right, then it takes a D8 and a slowed. That's okay. That one only had one hit point left, so it is dead. Because uh, I rolled a uh, one. So. <laughs> 19 perception. Literally any more damage and I would have killed. God damn it. <laughs> 19 will do it. Uh, so you're able to see these three kobolds here. Which one? Are you going to inform me that they're in the trees after I said, what is, what are they doing attacking the tree? Um, they're in the trees. They shoot from the hip. Oh, if I, how many are in the bush? Uh, three All of three? them. There's just three of them left total? Yep. So there's one in the right bush, two in the left bush. Are these yeah. five foot squares? They are. Let's see. I was thinking of maybe dropping fairy fire on them. But it's only a 20 foot cube. Uh, that'll be able to pick up both of those or just that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and pick up the two. Okay. Um, that's a DC what? DC. It's DC 13. Yeah. Probably if you're, you boosted your casting stat properly. Yeah. Yeah, DC 13. Well, either which way, that's not going to do. So both of those have been fairy fired. Cool. Okay. So now they're, they're clearly visible to everyone, right? Yeah, Correct. Glowing like a kind of a teal color, I guess. And so is the tree. <laughs> well, when it comes my turn, I'd like to shoot at one of the glowing figures. Yeah, we, we basically just gave ourselves a surprise round here. We have you did. Group. So at this point, go ahead and uh, roll initiative. I'm going to remove the draft horses real quick. That's a natural one. Just let us know when you want us to call out our numbers. Go for it. Uh, Arp has a 17. Uh, Navara has a 14. Okay. Russell has a 4. 
Frostgar has seven. And Lord Draho. I don't have dice again. Ah, right. But I'll find I'll find my dice by next week. I didn't expect we need them. I thought we'd have an online roller anyways. What's your initiative plus? Uh, plus three. So thirteen. Oh, good. Meat Shield goes first. Great. All right. That's um, why so. we have you. No, no, no I, I, I was actually very happy that I got yeah. That is going to make uh, Ark first for the moment. Um, I'm going to go to the ones that are uh, all shiny. Because okay. there's two there, so I want to keep them up. So I'm going to just rush up to the first one. That's 20 feet of my movement? That's right. All right. Well, the first one went down pretty easy, so I'm not going to bother raging or shifting yet. Okay. I'm going to pull up my maul and just uh, go to just swish them. Sounds good. Three to hit. No. This, this, <laughs> I like this die likes me today. You have advantage on that, right? That uh, is correct. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 23. That'll do. There are only two ways for that to get better. <laughs> One would have been very better. Okay. That is... Uh, 11 damage. You said 11? 11. Okay. That will kill that kobold. It screams out a painful death as it dies. <laughs> okay. And then... Um, the, the other one that's in that bush is within 10 feet of me, right? That is correct. I'll move up to engage him. There we go. And I'm just going to look down at him. I just kind of... <sighs> All right. Um, anything else? Any bonus actions or anything? Uh, no, no. I, I, I haven't quite seen them attack yet, so I don't know if they're worth getting angry about. Okay. So that is going to turn it into Cobalt turn. So Cobalt <laughs> six will come after Arc to start. What do you do? Yeah, and that is going to be a dagger attack, which is going to miss. Cobalt four is going to pop out with Sling. Sling is a plus four. Sling is the best weapon. And will also miss. <laughs> I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Good to but he is out of range and it's daytime, so either way, it's disadvantage. Uh, but at uh, plus four is 14. Does that hit? That just misses. All right. And pop out our last guy, who is our cultist. Yeah, these Sundays are kind of weird, dude. Who will? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right there. Okay. Uh, that is that set of guys. So we move to Naivara. Uh, one second. I was away from my desk. Um, the one that has fairy fire on it is still there? One yes, of us. it is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and Eldritch Blast that one. Okay. Yay, advantage. Uh, so 14. That will hit. Nice. Okay, uh, one damage. Damage? All righty. <laughs> Are you not? Yeah, you're not at the point where your chutzpah does that damage. <laughs> okay. Any uh, movement or bonus action? <coughs> Navara. Just step away from the desk after the attack. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, well, then yeah. um, we'll move down to Lord Draho. All right. The one with fairy fire. I'm going to put a uh, longbow attack in space. Okay. 20. Let's see. 
thought I had. Nope, I have a stack of D10 dice here, but no D20s. Damn, they left the limit. I'm really concerned now that I've lost my dice permanent. You know what? Here we go. I'll find a dice roller online. Okay. I was going to say, ah. Google's your friend. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Official Wizards one. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Plus That'll do. This is should hit. Yep. So a D8 plus 3. Oh, wow. Max damage. So 8. Okay. 11 damage. That kobold 11. squeals and dies. And then I'm going to duck back behind my wall. Okay. That's a good use of that cantrip, just uh, insta cover. Yeah, that's exactly why I took it. I get one cantrip as a high elf. I was like, oh, I'll take the instantly create a five foot block to hide behind. <laughs> that, that definitely thinking like an archer. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not very athletic. So exactly. That'll move to Frostgar. Okay. So there's one. I'll move up like 15 feet, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna use chill touch on the enemy that's left. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's within 120 feet. It is. I think everything on the board is within 120 feet. Mm -hmm. Five. Twenty-two. Will hit. It does. Four points of damage. All right. He grunts and isn't looking very well, but he's still standing. It now has disadvantage on its next attack roll against me. Okay. Any uh, bonus? Do you want to finish out any additional movement? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, Russell. Uh, I don't have any ranged attacks, so I'm just going to... What's this brown thing? Kind of... This here? Yeah. Uh, just a small tree. Uh, I'll move up towards the tree. And uh, um, that's 20 or 25. Yep, 25. And I will... And likewise, that'll give you partial cover for being effectively behind it. Is Shillelagh out of concentration, or is it just a... No. No, it's a pop it and you got it. Unless you, like, drop it. Yeah, so I'm just going to shillelagh my quarterstaff and um, ready my action in case one of them comes nearby. All right. So that's going to bring us to the cultist turn. It will come up to Ark. And pull up the cultist. Using a scimitar to attack. Oh, okay. It's on now. <laughs> I'm going to guess an 11 does not hit. It does not. All right. That is his move. So, Ark, it is back to you. Um, I'm going to look at this guy who pulled out a freaking sword at me. <laughs> I'm going to kind of grin. And I will take swing at him. Okay. I'm all. Again, this no one's hit me yet, so I'm I don't feel the need to get mad or tough. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have though, because that's just going to be an eight. <laughs> all righty. Any uh, movement or bonus action? Um. You know what? I will actually. Uh, just to make sure that uh, we've got a semi uh, flank situation going on, mm -hmm. I'm going to move two up and one to the right. So I'm just like behind him. So if he tries to run, he either has to go through me or through everyone else. Okay. So I'm making it's starting to set up a little kill box here. Sounds good. So that brings us to Cobalt 1. Just gets up to there. And we'll make a sling attack. And crits. That's like a whole four damage. It is a whole <laughs> D4. 
specifically I mean, 2d4 plus 2. So <clears throat> six points. Six points? Mm-hmm. Oh no, he dropped me to single digits. <laughs> cobalt 2. Where is Cobalt 2? Uh, didn't we kill him? There's one still in the that, tree. It's up in that blood stain. So, so there was a fifth tree. A uh, total of six. I think we okay. must have killed him. Oh yeah, his killed hit points the, are zero. Yeah. We killed Probably the two there. in the tree. There's the other one in the tree. So cobalt the four on the then. Ground and then the cultist. Okay. Range of thirty, so we'll do that again. <clears throat> that is not gonna hit. Yay! Oh, thinking about that, it's daytime. No, they had they have pack tactics, so yeah, that's pack appropriate. Tactics. Okay. Um, moving on to the next guy. Cobalt 5, which is that one there. Likewise, same thing towards Arc. Still misses. And down to Naivara. Okay, uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to hex the cultist. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll give him disadvantage on, I guess, dexterity checks. And then we will sh use my action to shoot Oops. him with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, we're going to miss him with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. How low? Because he uh, doesn't have nine. much AC. Yeah. Just a little bit out of done. Do we have the cultists make a performance check to dance? <laughs> from sure. all these missed shots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, any movement? Um, I guess we'll move over to the tree thing. This here? Next to the, like, four squares to my left. Uh, do you want to go the fifth square to get potential cover? Oh, yeah, cover? that's what I meant. Okay. Sounds good. So that'll give you partial cover as well. All you people with your cover. And down to <laughs> Lord Draho. Okay. The cultist has his back to me, so I'm going to do the most honorable thing I can do and shoot him in it. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so let me roll an attack. Uh, 13 total. That will hit. Oh, yay. Yeah. So that is seven damage. Okay. Uh, not looking good, but is still standing. Huh. Uh, any movement bonus action? Uh, no, I'm still hiding behind my dirt wall. Okay. Frostgar. Rinse and repeat. I'm going to, for the closest one, I'm going to chill touch it. What's the range on that? Is it uh, 30 or 20 feet. Ah, 120? Yep, that'll do. Spells what don't crit, right? Um, if yeah, if they have attack rolls, they crit. Okay, so I got a twenty on my dice roll. All right. Woo! So two d eight, seven plus two, so nine. All right. What you see is he turns an icy shade of blue and then just kind of shatters. Yeah. Cross powers activate. <laughs> That's morbid. Uh, Brutality. Any movement or bonus action? I'll move up another 15 feet. Okay. Russell. Let's see. Russell will move adjacent to this kobold in the bush. And take a whack at it. Okay. Uh, a versatile whack. And go first. my chillingly quarterstaff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is not going to hit. I rolled a four on the die. Nope. Sadly not. Uh, any bonus action? Um, no. Oh, all right. That brings us back to Ark. Where's the one who shot me? Um, that one right there. Move me up to him. I'm going to squint at him. Okay. 
then I'm going to swing it. Okay. And that is going to be a 17 to hit. That'll do. Uh, that is 13 damage. Um, he just crumples in a heap. How much movement take me to get to him? 15? Correct. Uh, I'm going to use the rest of my 15 to get to that other one that's still alive. Uh, there are two. Still- one here, one here. Oh, um, then I'll go to the one that's not in the bush because someone's got it. Okay. I'll at least move toward it. Already? I, yes. I keep rolling fours, then I might not I might not have this. So Cobalt 4 is uh, going to try and make okay. a break for it. Okay. If I'm correct. Do-do-do. Either which way, he'd have disadvantage. So he'll try to slingshot you. With a natural one, he drops his sling. Ooh. Uh, this one will attempt to dagger Russell. You brought a stick to a knife fight. Let's see. 12 plus 4 is 16. Does that hit? Pretty sure it does. All right. Yeah, um, bonus, just a d4 plus 2. Yep. Six points of damage. Well, at least their reason will be consistent. True. <laughs> and then, likewise, attempts to bolt. So, Russell, go ahead and make an attack of op. It's even worse than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Navarro. Two on the die. Uh, is the one that's running away at the top, is he within 90? Ninety-five. Crap. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move uh, up to that little red bush there. Okay. Uh, I'll use my bonus action to move my hex to him. Okay. And then I'm going to eldritch blast him. I got a nineteen to hit. That'll do. And uh, seven damage total. All right. Um, he squeals in a painful death. Oh, he died. Away, taking cover, then firing. <laughs> uh, Lord Draho. I've got to move forward um, up to the stump very arrogantly. Okay. Um, <laughs> as if I knew this was the outcome all along and was in no way terrified that I might get killed. And then I'm going to shoot the last one with the longbow. Alrighty. You're going to miss horribly. Mm-hmm. Take that back. Natural 20. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that time I did something useful. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Okay. I still got my kills. Just saying. <laughs> that only I also, counts as one. I, I, only got, I also got first blood. So eight. Oh, 16 damage. Nice. Um, you fire that bolt, it goes clean through the heart, and it just slumps and falls to the ground. And then I'm going to very loudly yell, and that's what you get for messing with nobility. (laughs) It went went through him, embedded itself in the ground in front of him, and then his limp body fell on him. (laughs) (laughs) Little man has some power after all. Mm. I'm then going to stand up and start very aggressively dusting my pants and cloak where I was hiding behind a wall of dirt. Uh, first, the cobalts have anything resembling clothing on them? Um, not really. Uh, each one has a dagger and a sling, um, and then essentially, um, cobalt leather diapers. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go up to the cultists. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, what are they wearing? Uh, the cultist has a, uh, set of robes, um, which cover leather armor, and then also a scimitar. Okay, um, the robes are, I assume, very bloody now? They are. I'm going to wipe off my maul on the robes. Okay. And then um, I'm going to put it back in its holster, start uh, checking his body for anything useful. All right. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. 
That's a 12 minus 1, so 11. 11? Uh, that'll do. Um, you're able to find 15 silver pieces on him. Okay. Nice. I'd like to collect a sling from one of the kobolds and, you know, whatever stones that they have for them. Sounds good. Uh, I'll hold up the scimitar and go, who wants this? I don't need it. Uh, I, I have no idea how to use that, so I'll pass. And I'm I have a much nicer okay. weapon. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. And approach the wagons and investigate those. Yeah, that was going to be my next thing, was figure out where the owners of the wagons are so that we can uh, get them back on the road. Clearly, some noble's commerce has been interrupted by these brigand... Sure. So um, and, and everybody go ahead and give me uh, investigation checks as you're looking things around. And while they're doing that, I'm going to go collect the horses. Okay. Uh, I'll do I'm just going to sit back and relax. Like, good day, so. uh, I have an 18 investigation. Okay. Did you, did you ask me to roll a handling check? Um, no need. You're able to calm them down now that the fighting is over. Okay. I had a 10 investigation. Okay. I got a nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Frost so or Navarro? For a fact is somebody. Uh, Navarro had an eighteen. Eighteen. I had a twelve. All right. So Navarro, as your uh, kind of. Passing your way up through these bushes, you find that there are three dead peasants in those bushes. Oh. <laughs> Looks like we just uh, acquired three horses. That is true. That's one way to look at it. I mean, um, surely these peasants work for some noble. They're his horses. We'll put their dead bodies on the cart and we'll wagon them back. Town. Yes, okay. it's important we figure out who their master was so we can return them um, along with their property. Uh, additionally, you do see some uh, coins and a gem both on the ground in one of the carts and some weapons in one of the carts. Let's take the gems and gold because obviously the brigands made off with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, as far as the weapons cash, what's, what's it? Uh, you see a hand axe, a two-handed sword, two short swords, and a long sword. Uh, the two-handed sword uh, is a great sword? Yep. All right, I'm going to take that and um, the, the extra hand axe after I collect the one that I embedded in someone's skull. Okay. So I'll just make that up. And you said what else was in there? Uh, two short swords and a long sword. Okay. Well... I don't need any of that. I got no taste crust. <laughs> I I am going to make sure everything that we don't steal is loaded up into one of the wagons, and then see if we can reattach the horses and get this caravan moving. Also, get the bodies of the peasants in here. What? Okay. And the kobolds and the cultists all in one of them. That way, instead of bringing the ears, we can just bring the whole bodies. That works. And it cleans up this road so that it doesn't look like, you know, there was a murder here. Actually, um, okay, it, it, there were no, like, spears or anything inside of the uh, cart. Nope, no spears. Okay. Um, does, does the cultist have any identifying marks? Ah, uh, he does not. Um, are there any loose sticks or something that are more than three feet long? Um, not loose, but you could certainly take some from like a tree branch. Sure. Um, I just want to take one of the cobalt skulls mm -hmm. or one of the cobalts, cut its ears out. If I can find out what constitutes their ear. Um, all you see are kind of slits in the side of their heads. You know, make some kind of knowledge check to know that uh, whether or not that uh, amounts to an ear. Sure. 
Also, I'm going to hold it up to everyone else and go, do you see an ear on this? <laughs> and I'll tell you that we should just take the penises. <laughs> well, I definitely don't know where a cobalt ear is. Okay. Or, you know, continue my original plan of take the whole bodies. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to, I just wanted to use one of them like to put its head on a pike as a warning to any of the other ones that might want to come this way. That warning would be lost on a simple creature like a kobold. I'm pretty sure putting one of their kids head on a pike is a pretty clear message. No, see, you're thinking like a rational lesser being, not an inferior being. <laughs> I have ranks. In my brain understands that he thinks there's a difference. I just don't see. <laughs> there is there's inferior beings, lesser beings, and then there's us, the upper crust of society. There's you, the dirt, the worms inside of the dirt. Ho ho Google, call me. Then pretty go. pretty much my outlook. These things are below reasoning, so they won't understand your message. Okay. Um, so yeah, body, bodies in one, we'll sort out an enemy later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, how much of the loot, the gold and gems and silver and stuff is there there so we can split that evenly? So there's uh, one small red ruby, 15 oh. silver pieces, 30 copper pieces, and 10 gold pieces. Okay. Um, each of the... Okay, so I killed three cobalts. I, let, I landed the blow on three of them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take a canine tooth from each of them. Okay. The ones that I actually get. See, there's five of us. Could you give me the, the, <laughs> again, it was, I know we've got the gemstone. Yep. 15 silver oh. pieces. I also just got this big fuck off sword. So like 30 gotta, copper. 30 copper and 10 gold. 10 gold. Okay, let me see if I can split that up amongst everyone. Yeah. I guess I also got this big I also got this big buck off sword and extra hand axe, so like I got something out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I got to test out my magical prowess. There's how many of us? Five? Correct. You have to fail at everything. <laughs> yeah, it should be That's... six copper, three silver, and two gold. That's what I was just about to say. This copper, three silver, two gold, two gold. Yep. Six copper, three silver, two gold. And the gemstone I'm going to hold on to. We can sell it in town and split the profits on that because I'm not going to shortchange any of my lackeys. Right. You don't sound like a very good noble. No, no. <laughs> see, that's the trick. You make your meat, your peons happy, and you treat them well, and they don't. Uh, Rise up with pitchforks and slit your throat in the middle of that night and burn down your house. What a more of my pizza. Oh, no, of our pizza. I mean, it's a very <laughs> civilized way to live your life. Plus, they're willing to work for you if you pay them well. So, as a side note, are you guys searching the kobolds? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give me <laughs> investigation checks. Uh, just fail that right now. 16. Uh, I got a 15. We found things they didn't know they had. Investigation. <laughs> mm-hmm. 12. Oh, I got a 9 again. Okay. 16 and 15, a 9 and a 12. All right. Uh, the 16 finds 21 silver pieces. Woo! The 15 finds 15 silver pieces. The 12 finds 19 copper pieces. And the 9 finds 8 copper pieces. Okay. Who wants to do the math? Nose goes. <laughs> Still got the calculator out. I do. 
That was a very good first combat. Well, the goal, the so maybe, I don't know. I'm not bad with math. Why do I even bother trying? <laughs> what the calculator's for? Think about that. What's everybody has hit points at? Uh, I'm at nine. So that would be 7.2 silver apiece. So seven silver, two copper. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I guess. That makes sense. They, they, they do go in steps of ten. Mm-hmm. Except for oh, Leptra. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm at ten HP because I didn't take any damage. I, okay. I think I'm the only one who got hit. Uh, 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 Russell I, got stabbed. I didn't get hit. Yeah, I got stabbed. Oh. I have four HP. Yeah, that, although that combat went very well. Mm-hmm. And then another uh, looks like 5.4 copper a piece, so I'm going to assume four, 5 copper a piece. Uh, I'll Is let someone really take away from my share of that the leftover copper. Like, again, I just got a great sword to go very well with my uh, hammer. So, like, I, I have options for, for damage now. That still comes out to not a clean number. That's six point seven five subtracting one guy's share. Okay, if you want to, I mean, if you want to take my whole share out of that calculation, that's cool too. No, this is the copper alone. <sighs> that's. Uh, let's just I'll, call it five oh, and go about yeah, our business. Let's just call it five. We, yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say that. I was going to say, how about we just say five and out of context? I take the how, copper. How about you have an original it. thought, Stephen? <laughs> I don't want to. He's a noble. Having original thoughts are for peasants. Yes, which they didn't, they didn't <laughs> take credit for. Yeah, I mean it's my it's my idea after you say it if it works out well. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so I say we hook up the horses and get out of here then, because yep. if they attack once, they'll likely attack again. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get in the third wagon, which will not have any loot or corpses in it. It's going to consist of just me. So given that uh, oh, you know that the horses' um, bits and bridles have been kind of cut from the carts, how are you planning on reattaching? Anyone got uh, mending? I am proficient with leather workers' tools, so I might be able to repair them or maybe makeshift them with some rope we have on hand. Sounds Anybody good. Give me a roll. I was going to say, we, I have rope, so we can just... Tie them back together, I guess. I did not take mending. No one did. I didn't me. take mending. <laughs> I, I See, took mine early. You guys so used to I give me give shit for having mending and not uh, spare the dime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're just taking these back to town and then going to the village the next day? No, I say we go on to the village. Okay, so. Um, were there any like geographical features where maybe we could hide the horses somewhat well while we're away from them? Not that you see on the map. For the most part, uh, the the road in and of itself is going to be fairly similar to this, with uh, <clears throat> mostly rolling grasslands, um, sparse trees, um, hmm. bushes, things along those lines. So there was nothing on the way here, like maybe an area with like some high grass or. Um, not terribly. Um, think like rural Iowa. Okay. It's a bunch of planes. <clears throat> Let's at least move these maybe at least away from this area. I, mean, well, I was going to say, I thought we would just take it with us and then bring it back. Yeah, just sure, take them to town with us and then come back with them. Sure, that works. Um, I'll leave one cart since I have animal handling. Okay, uh, first off, give me that uh, leather repair roll. Uh, sure. Uh, what what uh, ability are you... Uh, uh, so it's, it's just your tools, so it'll be, um, what is it, probably dex plus your proficiency? Dex? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, 16. That'll do. So you get them all uh, connected back up, and you're ready and set to roll. Um, I'll take the lead one because if any shit goes down, uh, I want to be the first one jumping off. Okay. Uh, I'll one. ride with Ark. So we'll do it this way. I have animal handling as well, so I can guide a cart. 
and make sure all the corpses are in one, the loops in another one, and then I'm in the third one. And who's going to be my chauffeur? I guess that's me. <laughs> Excellent. We we only really need the one cart, right? No, we need all three because I'm not sitting in a cart with corpses or a bunch of excess weapons. <laughs> that, that's fair. So is it though? Draw hose up in the first cart then. Probably because okay. let's put the archer on the front line. <laughs> and you're gonna be like in the in the back. Now are these covered or are they just open? Open carts, just like we see. Okay. So yeah, he he'd want he'd want to be in the the area where he can get some cover. Okay. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. It has nothing to do with the fact I'm tired of walking. <laughs> I mean, you could sit up front too, or you could be in the back where you duck down if you. Uh, no, the driver sits up front. There we go. All right. So post travel um, and combat, you're, you guys are sitting at about, uh, we'll say six or seven p.m. ish. Um, how long do you want to travel to finish out the day before camping for the night, or do you want to push all the way on through and uh, attempt to assault the Cobalt Tribe at uh, evening? It does not uh, sound like I, a good idea. I think they. It, it, how much does anyone know about kobolds out of curiosity? Can I, I just make like a general from. intelligence check to see what I know about kobolds? Sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, nine. Uh, sorry, because I have a minus one. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, yeah, that'll do. Uh, so you know that they're generally cavern dwellers. Uh, more often than not, you don't tend to see them up and about during the day. So this combat was a bit odd. Um, also don't tend to see them hanging out with cultists. Normally the kobolds will find some form of dragon that they will attempt to worship. Um, whether or not the dragon accepts them, uh, they may do it in secret. And the cultist was just human, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, what intelligence stat could I use? Arcana, history, investigation, nature, religion? Uh, let's go with history. Uh, okay, then that's books. a 21 total to determine what I know about kobolds. Okay, um, so since you got over the 20, you'd also know that uh, they tend to be sensitive to sunlight. Um, they often run in packs, and that uh, sunlight sensitivity tends to make it so that they're often squinting if they're out in the sun, making it uh, much harder for them to function in a combative type role. Gotcha. So I'm going to immediately inform everyone of my superior breeding and education at the <laughs> finest halls of Mythdranor. And I'm going to inform you all, if any of you had studied in school, you would not, <laughs> cobalt, do not function well in the daylight. They much prefer the dark, dank caves and the darkness. If we attack in the evening, we give them an unreasonable advantage they should otherwise not need or have. I say we rest for the night and attack sometime around midday tomorrow. Never been to school, but that sounds like a mighty fine idea. Yeah. Um, so I would say once it's supposed to be like just pre-dusk, we should probably move the cart off the road a bit. And if we find anything before that happens that like looks like it would be reasonable cover... That's where we should set up the camp. I do have a tent. Excellent. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Let's keep going until we either find cover or it's too dark to travel safely. Okay. Um, so in that case, um, Ark, go ahead and give me a survival roll. Woo! Ten. <laughs> Decent. Um, so you travel for about an hour. Um, to be fair, I could to that. <laughs> you travel for about an hour and then uh, you come across um, uh, not really heavily wooded, but uh, off, say, to the, the east side of the road, um, a kind of small gladish area that has a, a few additional surrounding trees than you've seen much of anywhere else. Okay. Uh, looks like a good place to set up. Um, so... Uh, Leave the cart over there. Uh, why don't we circle the carts up? Yeah, so we'll use those as cover. Um, okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, 
detach the horses, let them graze a bit. Okay. But I'll make sure to rope them to what looks like the sturdiest tree. Sure. So they don't go too far. Uh, once they're done eating, and uh, if anyone wants to set up my tent, they can. If not, I can get to it myself. I was just going to stretch my tent out across my cart so that it forms like a tarp and then lay under it and go to sleep. All right. I mean, I can do that with mine, too. Um, And uh, I'm hurt, so I... uh, What what uh, what order wound do we want to take watch? I mean, I only need four hours to actually recover to full, so I'm not taking a watch. It's beneath me. So you're just you're just going to rest for four hours and then do nothing for the rest of the night? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm going to rest for four hours, then get up and eat a pleasant meal by myself without you commoners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I was just trying to figure out where you were going with that. <laughs> I'm not going to be on watch, but I will be awake for four hours during someone else's watch. Sorry, Sorry that, that, that's me, the player, was confused with what you were saying. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm um, not on the watch, but I will be awake and eating for half the night. All right. Um, well, if someone wouldn't mind... Taking one watch while uh, me and uh, Russell sleep off our uh, wound here. Sure. And then uh, I'll take second. Okay. I'll take first watch. Um, so since I'd be, as, as long as I get at least one hour of rest, I would get the benefit of a short rest, right? That's correct. Okay. Well, let me know if I get at least an hour of sleep. Okay. Um, so functionally, you guys are setting up camp around like eight or nine ish. Um, if you're not planning on moving out until noon the following day. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, close to noon. We want to attack sometime and when the sun's at its highest. Like we'll arrive at about there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then you'll be heading out around 10 a.m. Um, that gives you roughly 12 hours. How do you want to split that up? I think, oh, I figure, like, you know, after the eight hours of rest, it takes a moment to actually pack back up, get our bearings, get the horses rigged back up, so that takes some time. Well, more specifically in uh, who's taking what hourly sections of watch. Okay. Um, well, if it's only four of us actually watching. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, technically, I'm not taking a watch. But I'm only going to be asleep for four of those 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Right. Though I will be awake at the fire. I'm technically taking watch, but I'm not going to actively patrol. Okay. So I am keeping an eye out for trouble, but I'm not. Well, if, if you're not actively watching, then we're not going to count you in the watch. Okay. Just like, say. Like if, if, you're refu- if your character's refusing to watch, we're not going to rely on you to be part of the watch schedule. It's <laughs> a very good, good idea. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what I was going with that. So You're, you're, you're watching uh, yourself. I will watch if something comes within the realm of the campfire. I'll be fully aware of it. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll go for the first four hours, I guess. All right. And then I'll take the next four. Yeah, and then I'll four. take the, the last some point. Okay. All right. And then we have, we have a wild card. <laughs> so, this is true. Well, so we need, or we can break it up into three hours. Right, but we need um, we need eight hours to recover our HP to yeah, full. Eight right? hours of rest, mm-hmm. and then again, like it's going to take us a little while to fully set up the camp, and then when we get up, it's going to take us a little while to break the camp. Mm-hmm. So I figure by the time. Uh, like, say we wake up at 7 or 8. We get some food. So if Navara and Frostgar take the first two, that's eight hours for the two of us. I'll let yeah. know. So then we can at least recover our HP. Yeah, so 
As long as you don't go before that, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So splitting it in half with Nivar and Proskar at the start, and Ark and uh, Russell for the second. After, yeah. That works. Okay. So um, in that case, uh, for first watch, Nivar and Froskar, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, 13. Okay. And that 20. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Um, your watch goes rather peacefully, um, leaves let rustle through the trees, and um, you guys catch into the next watch without a problem. Uh, so for that one, uh, Ark and Russell, go ahead and give me perception checks. And when we wake up, are uh, we up to full, or are we... Do we yes. Roll? Okay. Um, for perception, I got a 16. 16? Okay. Same. Okay. Likewise, your guys' uh, watch goes smashingly. Um, no problems whatsoever. Rather peaceful night. Uh, what does that put you guys at for total HP again? I am back up to 10. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd be back up to 15. Okay. And Frostgar and uh, Droha, what do you guys have for total HP? I uh, have whatever. a total of 9. Hold on, let me... Bring up the character again. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Plus two for constitution, so ten, twelve. Yeah, oh, hold up. Yes, here. Oh, friggin' jars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she does not need me. She's just bringing more empty jars. Put on the shelf. Is that my son? No. Oh. Dumb. Whoever it is sucks. I will let them know that they suck. Okay. Who is it? It's my group from the Wednesday game. Oh, yeah, they suck. Okay, you guys suck offer. officially. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Uh, okay, so very well I, we're told. <laughs> I didn't even write down my HP. Give me a second here. Got to figure out my HP now because I'm that incompetent at this. Uh, what's, your what's, your, what's your constitution modifier? It is a plus two. So 12. Yeah. It's a D10, right? Yeah, yep. D10. Yep. Yep. You're a fighter. So D10. Yeah, I know. Yes. Uh, by the way, did anyone pick up uh, the leather armor from the cultist? Not that anyone nope. said. Okay. Now, you did carry all the bodies with you, so it is still technically with you. I mean, I'm better off without it, so... Can't, can't wear it, so... Can't wear it. I'm already wearing leather, so... Okay. Can't, can't wear armor twice. I mean, you can, it just doesn't help. I mean, if it's a bigger size than what you're already wearing. So, for your guys' evening meals and or morning meals, what are you doing in that uh, respect? Uh, the morning meal, I could do a quick uh, little hunt. Okay. Well, for so that, survival. go ahead and give me a survival check. Okay. Um, and also, I do have the tribe member background, which functionally has the uh, the outlander feature. Mm -hmm. So that is a natural twenty. Yeah, oh, nice. Ooh. You're able Where to bag a, a nice nine point buck with that. Okay, so we're gonna have to leave some of that like. Strewn over the <laughs> <laughs> Um And I'm going to go ahead and uh, while we're eating, I'm going to uh, go ahead and take the antlers out. And the, well, I'm going to I'm going to take the whole head, so then later I can like clean the skull. Sure. And then just go. That's mine. Um, and I'll also make it a point, uh, since we're going to have a lot of extra time on our hands, I'm going to um, I'm gonna uh, skin it, too, and keep the hide. Okay. Uh, um, do you want me to yeah, roll, roll the survival for that one as well. Uh, 15. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, moderate mm. quality. Okay. Nice. That's good. 
everyone's got something nice. All right. Okay. What's up, guys? Can make a little bit of venison stew this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, post evening meals, morning meals, uh, you guys get back uh, onto the road. It takes about mm-hmm. two hours and um, no interruptions on your way there. Uh, and then you find yourselves at uh, Sable Ridge. Oh. Okay. Uh, we don't want to roll in there in the cart, I don't think. No, I was thinking we would just park the carts and go in on foot, but. Yeah. Um, we could assert dominance and just like spur on the horses to a gallop and, and just bust in there. <laughs> I'm just worried about them killing the horses because they're insane little idiots. And then we have to figure out another way to get the carts back. Yeah, fair. And unless we can get the druid to level two, we won't have a pack animal. I suppose before I get uh, your guys' placements here at the gate, are you guys going in through the gate or trying to come in and around from one of the side walls? Um, I want to at least check to each side to see if maybe there's an alternative like entrance, like holes in the walls or something. Sure. Um, Just walking right up front seems a little asking for trouble. Yep. So go ahead and uh, give me an investigation roll. I'll go ahead and help him with that. Okay. That's 20. I'll we'll go around the other uh, side. Which, if it matters, is at minus one. That's okay. Still in that 20. Uh, I got an 18. So as you him. kind of peruse your guys' way through there... Once this loads, this will give you a little view into where the bad guys are. Oh, so we're doing a little recon out while we're at it. Yep. Yay. Cool. Um, and I would have tried to do this stealthily. I mean, okay. if you want to roll for that yep. as well. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, eight. Not super stealthy, but let's see. It's also daylight, so they get penalties on perception. That is true. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, you you kind of stumble at one point while you're along the right wall, and this cobalt here hears something, kind of wanders over but doesn't see anything through the wall because it's too short and then wanders back. Good thing they're not bright. Mm-hmm. I said that. Okay. So the rest of the way I'm going to be extra careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I manage to find any other ways in? Um, no, while the walls are kind of in somewhat disrepair, they are still structurally there. Um, they're only about six foot tall, but they are made of stone. Um, you can get over them, not all that hard. So it really just depends on which direction you want to go in through. Okay. Um, I relay that to the rest of the group when I return to them. So if we figured out that this is the general layout, could could we boost our way over the back and Come in from behind them. You sure can. I, mean, I, I can alley oop you guys. That would be my vote, so they don't know that we're coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'd like to hide behind uh, one of the houses to shoot at them. Okay. Um, while I was going across, uh, did I manage to? Were there any like parts of it where I could see where the cobalts were? Yep. So all of the ones that are kind of red and bright, like these guys. Uh huh you're able to see um, because they're all outside. Uh, Likewise, also see some sort of uh, tunneling down into this area. Um, And Uh in the middle where that tunnel is, is also a skeleton and a zombie that you see. Okay. Um, I relate that to them too. So it looks like as far as I can see, they're concentrated to the right hand side. Mm Mm-hmm. So what we should probably do is enter from, uh, just based off of the map's orientation, the upper left corner from as far as I can tell. Are these things on the corner like um, guard towers? Correct. Can I jump the wall and climb up in the top of the tower so I have, like, would I have a good view of the whole camp? 
Um, to an extent, uh, they're they're about um, a single story up, plus the the roof mm -hmm. itself that you can get up on. Um, and each one of the buildings is likewise single story, but does have kind of high pointed uh, roofs. Okay, so it wouldn't give me any advantage over the buildings to go on the parapet. No, not with where most of them are at. That's um, what I wanted to check, because if I could shoot over the house, I would. But if it's the same height as the house, that's pointless. It, the buildings if you got something. in this bottom kind of middle one, you'd have access to being able to see all of that. Yeah, but no one's going to go with me. And if they charge me, I'd have to fight them by myself. You know what? Yeah, let me do it. I think I can take a couple cobalt with a right here. Okay. I'll come behind you. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, Great. Are you you gonna, stand in the doorway. Are you going to um, try and sneak your way in over? I will tell you right now, if we're trying to go <laughs> with subtlety, it will not work, but I can try. Okay. Totally up to you guys. I yeah. would say if I could boost you up into one of those towers... I can, at, I can at least keep them forward enough that you can snipe from back there, and I have a position to fall back to if I need to. Well, let me see if I can stealth up that tower without mm -hmm. being caught. Before wow. he does that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you got this. Well, I rolled a 22 stealth total, so. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of armor are you wearing? I am wearing um, chain mail. So that'll be a disadvantage. Oh, it, I always forget that. <laughs> Heavy armor, yeah. Not, not Elven Chain. So let's correct that 22 to a 13. Yeah, that's not bad. That's better than I did. Right. I'm, I'm just wearing, uh, I'm just wearing clothes. <laughs> they don't see anything. Yes, I am the sneakiest. Okay, so I think what I can do, he, he'd be able to, now he sees like the center section. Does he able to see to like that open space on the left? Um. You'd be able to hit that one, but not that one. Both of those two, though that one with partial cover, that one with partial cover, this entire section of these set. Gotcha. Do we want to maybe keep you up there and draw them to the gate? That way they can't surround us. It's up to you guys what you want to do. I just went up there so I have a clean shot and everybody, and if they try and come at me, they can only come one way. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, uh, I'm just trying to create a situation where her you know, if we get overwhelmed, we have someone to fall back to, and it's hard for them to get us around. Well, that'd be the towers, because they can only come up. They'd have to come up the walls or up the staircase, and you can stab them off the wall or, you know, <coughs> stab them coming up the staircase. I mean, I, I think the walls are structural. I don't think you can actually walk on the wall itself. No, no, no. They could climb up the wall to get at us, but... Oh, right. They, they wouldn't be able to do it smoothly and cleanly, and we could just stab them while they're coming up. So so do you want me to just, like, uh, bottleneck them at the entrance to the tower? Yeah, and then if things go south, everyone j runs into a tower, one of these front two towers here, and we force them up the narrow staircase and just stab them repeatedly. I mean, I think I've heard enough of them. I could probably mimic some of the sounds they make and maybe try and draw some of them off. Because it looks like there's just one ladder or... Why don't you just like try to, to draw through the door out. then, and then we just jump them out, out the gate? Pair of the cards make like, like a sound of a kobold that's kind of struggling. Or, yeah, I, I think the whole tricking a few of them away, that's only going to work once. Right, mm -hmm. but then we don't... It's up to you guys. I just know that's where I'm going to stay for the duration of the fight. It does help mitigate some of the problem, but yeah... So if we want to try and draw a few away, I could... I mean, if we can get these four out the gate, then we don't... Have, like, we can stealth our way through. So we're dealing with four less, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think if we do he that... Did I, get, did I get cut out? I'm not hearing anyone. No, we still hear you. Yep. It's got to be on your end. All right, so if you can trick them to come oh, out... Yeah. If you can trick them to come out, we can at least pick off those four before the other ones know what's going on. Uh, and then we'll deal with the situation as it comes. But I, I think the main thing is to uh, try to keep them from overwhelming us. Yeah. So when they, when they come out, we'll each pick one and make that one our target mm -hmm. as individuals. And if any of them survive that initial first hit, uh, we make sure they don't survive the second. 
Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So where do you guys want to be sitting in this? Um, I'll be kind of off to that uh, bottom uh, left corner down on the ground. Unless we want them up in the tower. In here or down here? No, I, I, we want those first four cobalts to come out the gate. Yeah, so... So that way, down, as we're killing them, the other ones don't see them. Yeah, so we want them kind of around the corner, so... Yeah, so I'm going to be in front of wherever you're standing. So you have to draw them toward us, but I need to be the first thing they see. Mm -hmm. So a, a little more to the left. I want to give them an opportunity to turn the corner. Yeah. So like uh, so, yeah. or up here? Uh, yeah, that, that's good. So that okay. way, don't see me before they see him. Mm -hmm. I'll go on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you guys have range, so you guys can just hit him from the back. Yep. Um, yeah, and reach around. And uh, for, for this one, too, uh, this is sort of a personal, like, I'm... I'm uh, doing this to avenge the people that the cobalt killed. I'm going to use the great sword for this one. Okay. Um, I'm going, can I give myself guidance? You can. All right. So do you want like a deception or? Uh, for that, let's go with uh, performance. Performance. All right. So I definitely need a D4 for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. You're, you're, just, you're just warming up your vocal cords. We have a 16 plus 1 is a 17. I mean, I'm convinced. <laughs> All right. So are they. So they start trucking down this way. And you guys let me know when you want to start this. Okay. Um, as soon as it, as soon as it's apparent that they, uh, well, once this one comes here and is about to see uh, the, my Kenku friend, or mm -hmm. actually is in danger of having seen that he's the source of, this, of it, I am going to run up and slash at him with the sword. All right. Um, I would like to uh, shillelagh my staff as well. Okay. We can call that uh, pre-combat because that lasts a while. All right. So um, first off, go ahead and give me initiative rolls. That way we can just do you guys in order. Uh, arc is 14. Okay. Oh. Nice. That is a four for Russell. Okay. Uh, 15 for Navarro. Mm -hmm. 17 for Frostgar. I got 20 total, baby. Nice. <laughs> All so right. First one, natural one to be your uh, bodyguard. So that's going to put uh, Lord Draho first. Awesome. I'm going to step up to the edge. We'll creep up to the edge. Mm -hmm. Lean over and shoot the one, um, any one of the two in the middle. All right. Go for it. And Pull that wood comes. Up, shooting straight down the skyscraper? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 11. Do I hit? Uh, sadly, just shy. That's okay. I didn't expect to hit with the left. <laughs> they have a smaller silhouette when you're shooting down at them. Well, also, I'm not a very good archer. <laughs> <laughs> the closer right. they are, my, my nearsightedness comes into effect and I can't see as well. So that'll move us to Frostgar. All right. I'm going to five foot step out and Ray of Frost, the fourth one. Okay. Go all day. Oh. For 16. Wow, that will hit. It takes four points of damage. Okay, it is not looking good, but it is still alive. And it has 10% movement reduction. Okay. Or 10 feet. That will bring us to Navara. Okay, uh, I'm going to step out. Um... You have enough to the last one. Hex the one in front of the one he shot at, so the third one. Okay. 
And I've got a 24 to hit. That'll do. Damn. <laughs> nice. That's twice what you needed. And uh, 16 damage. All right. That one dies. Wow. Man, have you ever felt incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll bring us to Ark. Oh, that you would have uses. Remember, there's Lord Dreho. Okay. Um, as my bonus action, mm -hmm. uh, you see almost as if my muscles are bulking up and my fur seems to actually get a little bit longer and thicker as I shift. Uh, utilizing my uh, my shifter nature, and on top of getting plus one to AC, I get minimum uh, for my extra. Uh, I have five temporary hit points because I roll fucking low for my bonus hit points. So that should bring oh, you to twenty. Me. I get. Hit points for killing that guy. Uh, doesn't uh, it just bring them back if you're lower? Uh, when I reduce creature to zero HP, I get temp HP equal to my charisma bonus plus warlock level. Oh, nice. So I get four temp HP. Sweet. Okay. okay, then I'm going to um, swing it up with my sword. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 14 to hit. That will hit. Uh, that's 12 hit points of damage. All right. It squeals and dies. And then I and then I move up to the next one. Okay. Uh, that then brings us to Russell. Um, I guess I will step out behind uh, Ark. Okay. And try and whack it with a sling since I can't get in there to uh, hit it with a stick. I mean, you, you could. If you... I mean, if I can, then I'll do that. But <laughs> I mean, we can um, see you come up. Functionally, the, with 5e, the way the movement will work is you can step into this space as long as you step back out by the end of your turn. Okay. Uh, gonna... But if you okay. don't kill it, it would get an attack of op. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, I bet I'll I bet step in and that. take a whack at it with, a, with my stick. All righty. Well, we'll say that I slightly overextended on my swing, so I'm a, I made a little room. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 21 to hit. That will do. And we have 1d8. That is max damage plus 3. So that would be 11 damage total. All right. It also squeals and dies. Nice. Do you oh, want to move through or move back? Uh, I'll stay behind Herc. Okay. That is a good idea. <laughs> All right. So then that brings us to top of the round, which, uh, because it was a surprise round, they don't get to go, which brings us to Lord Draho. All right. Chance to redeem myself. I'm going to shoot the one that's left. Okay. 20. Oh. Whoa, that's a natural 20. What a time to waste it. <laughs> that's going to be not my last one. Not if you make an intimidation roll immediately after. <laughs> so that is eight damage total. All right. It likewise dies. <laughs> what a time to waste a crit. It, it, it you probably know had like four health <laughs> left. <laughs> Only one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So that was a good ambush. Yep. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty I'm... sure the rest of them know we're here now. Who knows? Um, are we still in combat, or did we move out of combat? Uh, let's see whether or not any of the close ones actually understand anything. Those three don't. <laughs> Spells going off. <laughs> <laughs> That one doesn't, so right. zombie skeletons right. cultist. Four. Then I heard three of our guys I heard four of our guys die. Alright. Cultist does know what's going on and directs them towards you. So we'll go ahead and stay in combat for the moment. Okay. So that'll bring us to Frusgar. 
<clears throat> All right, move me in line, like right outside the corner of the tower. Like 5, 10, 15, 20 feet. Uh, 25 since you're moving through a person, but yes. Okay. And then I will... Okay, it's called again. Chill touch for 120 feet. On which one? The one straight up. This one here? Yep. Okay. Does 11 hit? Uh, that is questionable because it's not showing me anything. Is it a standard <laughs> skeleton? It should be, yes. Ah, oh, there it is. And I was going to say its AC is 13. That is correct. Zombies okay. are 8. They just have very specific death conditions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one perk to having been a freaking necromancer. I'll take my last five foot movement and move myself back over. Okay. Shoot and scoot. Yep. All right. That brings us then to Navara. Okay. I'm going to step out, uh, switch my hex to the, I'm assuming that's a skeleton. Yep. Uh, and then we'll fire an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. That'll do. And 8 damage. Nice. Uh, yep. All right. Um, it shudders at the blast. You can see kind of uh, cracks forming over its uh, skeleton kind of um. physique. Um, <laughs> but still standing. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop back behind Frostgar. Okay. Boom. That'll bring us to Ark. All right. I'm going to move uh, into the road area. And then, uh, then move me uh, one further up. Um, I'm going to very quickly uh, plunge the sword into the ground and throw a javelin at the cultists. Okay. Um, because I like to challenge the guy in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I also apparently like to miss the guy in charge. Ten? No, that will not hit. Okay. <clears throat> um, I, then pick up, I then pick up my sword again, um, and I kind of give him a menacing look. Okay. You can see him sort of directing the others to attack in your direction. Okay. All right. So that's going to bring us to zombie turn. Which will bring us to cultist turn. Oh, he's a brave one. He is. He's the only one who can move that fast. Yep. <laughs> Hey, uh, Necromancer into... 101, if your slowest zombie is 15, you move 10. <laughs> Cobalt turn. 25. And then Russell. Uh, how tall are these towers? Um, the towers themselves are uh, one story, so about 10 foot, with a platform on top to stand with a bit of a kind of ledge to hide behind. Would that be an action to climb it? Uh, it would. Okay. So I'm just going to come to the edge right underneath uh, Lord Draho and then ready my sling in case anything come within. How far is it? 30 feet? Yep. 30 feet for basic, um, 120 for long range at disadvantage. Uh, I'll leave it for basic. Okay. That's okay. I'm the bait. <laughs> That'll move us to skeleton turn. And back to the top of the round. So, Lord Draho. I'm going to move up diagonal so that I'm hiding behind the wall, but not in front of the staircase. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, just good. consider this all top space rather than the lower space. Okay. I just want to be below the wall so I can take cover. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to stand up and shoot the cultist. Okay. And then duck behind the wall again. Sounds good. I respect your choices. 23 total, yeah. I'm assuming that hits him. That it does. 
There you go. Uh, and 10 damage. Piercing. This cult is three. Um, you splatter his guts. Oh, is he dead? He is. All right. Then I'm going to, of course, scream over the wall. Uh, your robes suck. <laughs> Man, you got to work on your insults. <laughs> he does. Oh, I, I to to the also, the fact that I only talk shit to stuff that I know I can kill, or has been killed recently. Okay, so the ske- so the undead don't go down with that. Good to know. I mean, meta game. He's cultist three. I assume there's <laughs> two and one in there too, but potentially. Hmm. On, on the IMDb page, it says uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> That's meta gaming, so I'm assuming we took care of the cultist. All right, Frostgar. I'm a five foot step out and ray of frost the first bow bolt. Okay. Thirteen. Will hit. Nice. One point of damage. <laughs> all right. Uh, you, you tag his foot. He's not moving all that fast, but uh, doesn't seem to truly be bothered by it. He's got yeah, I'll move my five-foot step back. All righty. Uh, Navara. Uh, skeleton is still up. He is. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and blast at him. Okay. Please, don't, please don't make me switch weapons. Uh, we got a uh, 21. That will hit. And five damage total. And that is just enough. Takes him right out of the combat. Okay. Uh, so no more skeletons, just kill molten zombies as far as we can see? As far as you can see. I okay. will swap my hex to the zombie and okay. pop back behind Frostguard. I love this peekaboo we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Tactics, it, it they're called, a wonderful it's thing. Called, it's called strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys promised me that you didn't know how to do that. <laughs> Never said we didn't know how, just said we don't often do. <laughs> the one time we actually did plan to focus fire on an opponent, that was one of the most successful combats we've ever had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't happen. Usually we start off with a good plan, then as soon as combat starts, everyone goes their own way. <laughs> we, we, start out, we start out with something that is arguably a plan, and that quickly proves to be not what we do. <laughs> All right, that brings us to Ark. Okay, um, Ark, seeing as there's no more things that are susceptible to bludgeoning damage, is going to keep his sword out. Okay. <laughs> um, although, seeing that zombie, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to pull out his, uh, his silver skull, and use his action to focus on it, so now he is under the subject of uh, the uh, protection from good and evil spell, specifically for undead. Okay. Um, he is then going to take his movement to move... Uh... You know what? I can actually engage that first guy. Yes, you can. I'm going to. Um, and... I am not going to rage yet because I'm not guaranteed to take damage and I have an attack. Okay. Still shifted. All right. Anything else? Uh, that, that's my entire action economy. All right. I don't do a bonus attack. So. so that will bring us into zombie turn. Yay, he's slow. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not as slow as I thought. Uh, that would be no cultists left, so uh, cobalt turns. Give me no one. Hmm. Surrounded? You mean I can attack in any direction? That you can. <laughs> Three, four, oh. Rock. What a time to not be a battle master fighter. True. So I can just swipe them all. Do cobalts are plus three. So the two and the six definitely will not hit. How about fourteen? Uh, that misses. 
And 18. Uh, that's a disadvantage? Uh, they are pack tactics. Oh. So it cancels out. The 18 does it. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. It is going to be 1d4 plus 2. But what that kobold doesn't realize is he just made himself my priority card. He did. And it's that one right there that does 5 points of damage. Yay! Which just gets rid of your temporary. It's just enough to get rid of my temporary. <laughs> but that's what it's for. All right, and then the final cobalt up here will sling at you. And miss. Damn right he does. Which will then bring us to Russell. Uh, I will move up to the wall uh, of this building above us. This one here? We have instinct. I like it. And... So I'll take a sling at that uh, far left one here. Okay. Level 10. Oh, you mean employee of the month there? Yep. <laughs> uh, how about a 17 to hit? That'll do. Uh, five damage. That does it too. Cobalt down. Yeah. Nice. All oh. right. Any uh, bonus action? Um, no. no. Okay. Back to Lord Draho. Right. All right. So, as you can probably guess, I have a very set tactic: shoot the zombie with the bow. Okay. Just, just, just as a point, that that cobalt that just died had not been hit before that hit, right? That's correct. Okay, good to know that I'm uh, my minimum damage with either the mole or the great sword <laughs> is guaranteed to kill them. Good that is also me. true. <laughs> All right, I rolled. I rolled a twenty-one to hit. I love that plus seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and nine damage. Okay, and that's on the zombie. Yeah, it's piercing. Oh wait, no, it's only the. Uh, Skeletons that get the resistance to piercing. That is correct. Man, being a necromancer makes your brain small to this stuff. Uh, you said you did eight? Uh, nine damage. Nine. All right. Should have 13 health, I think. So one more hit should do it. So down to Frostgar. All right, gonna five foot step out and ray of frost the zombie. Okay. Does 12 hit? It does. Seven points. Okay. Moving back. Yep. Unfortunately, it wasn't a headshot. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Nivara. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop out and Eldritch Blast the zombie. Okay. You want to maybe go uh, tower two? Eight. Uh, you said eight? Eight to hit. That hits. Just hits. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's flipping out of the way. Uh, 12 damage. All right, that will get rid of zombie three. <clears throat> yep. Sorry, zombie three? Yep. That's also good to meta know. Uh, <laughs> I will swap my hex to the guy in the back. Okay. And then I will move forward. Let's see, one, two, three, four. It's basically behind that building there. Yep, opposite yeah. Russell. Okay. Ah, that brings us to our... Okay. Time for me to do what I'm supposed to. Um, I let out this huge roar, mm -hmm. and in honor of that same voice actor, I would like to rage! <laughs> <laughs> well, you go all Willingham on that. <laughs> Too bad I kept Reckless for another level. True. But... Um, <laughs> I, I, I am harder to damage, so 
Uh, Kobold directly in front of me. Okay. That one. Yeah. There are three of them directly in front of me. I was just uh, about to say that, but I didn't want to be a smart ass. <laughs> Based off the orientation, and you know what? That's fair. <laughs> uh, 23 to hit, and I know it's dead, but let's have some fun. That it is. That is 12 damage. Ooh, that definitely kills it. All right, so I'm going to uh, go for like a... Uh, as I'm slicing it, like it doesn't make it all the way through, so he does kind of like knock into the one next to him just to, just to mess with him a bit. Okay. And I only get one attack until fifth level, so that, that's what I got. All right. <laughs> but I'm so holding it, the line. It bumps into that one, which kind of pushes it back slightly, and then it writes itself. <laughs> Hey, I, I have to admire his commitment to this. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll make it our three kobolds turns. Let's see. Oh, armor of 16, and I'm wearing no armor. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Which is a plus four. So you said 16? 16. All right, even the 12 plus four, that's going to hit. So all three of them. That's okay. I take half damage. Wait, they all hit? Yep. 12 plus 4. Yep. I think I raged. Definitely. So, 16 total points. Uh, half would be 8. Okay. I felt that. That is their turn, which moves us to Russell. Let's see. I will... Throw a stone with my sling at uh, one of these guys. Or would either of them be disadvantaged because it's through what's its face? Um, not disadvantage, but uh, that one would have partial cover. Okay, so I'll do the one above it. Okay. Just kill one so they stop getting that pack technique bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Nine plus five would be 14 to hit. That'll do. And that will be another five damage. Five will take it. Thanks. Yay. Okay, brings us back to the top of the round with Lord Draho. The one that's off in the distance I'm going to shoot at because he's not covered. Okay. Good man. I mean, he's hexed. Oh, wow. So what's that mean to me? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> 22 to hit. Will hit. He's mysteriously slightly more purple. 10 damage. We'll kill it. Yes. There's no kill quite like overkill. <laughs> <laughs> Down to Frostgar. Frostgar. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Your, Your turn. Okay. I'm going to have to move by 10. Very angrily at this building. 20 yeah. diagonally. Or 25. Yeah, four squares diagonally. Yep. Yep. And then I will <clears throat> chill touch that got, uh, cobalt. Okay. It'll be 24. Yeah, we'll hit. For seven points of damage. And that will kill. All right. Bring on the third wave. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that third wave already? It is. The, the first wave was the one we lured out. Oh, they're, they're back there. Good. I can maintain this range. I only get two of those a day. So I'm making it count. No, I always laugh because I understand the reason why these games put a limit on stuff like rage and stuff like that. But I always have to laugh at the idea that like, if this were real, you'd have this guy just like get really angry twice a day. <laughs> it, it, it's because I, my body can only sustain that adrenaline rush for so long so far. God, but I wish I could only get really angry twice a day. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
just the idea of like after that know, second it, time in the day, he's just super chill. Well, at, at, at your age, you're about a fourth or fifth level character. So. Yeah. What at my age? Shit, I was a poorly strategized build. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to Navara's turn. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna pop out from where I'm hiding. Is there anybody within ninety feet? Yeah, more than likely. Stand behind the man bear shield. Yep, they're sixty to sixty-five. Okay. Uh, cultists, I'm assuming, are in this. Yep. Uh, two cultists, two zombies, two kobolds are what you have left for the. I'm gonna upper swap my hex the to the cultist and Eldritch Blast. Alrighty. Does anyone have any area of effect spells or healing spells? Uh, Thirteen. <laughs> Will hit. Healing spell. I'm sorry, why that was... Uh, eight damage. Oh. <laughs> eight damage, alrighty. It I've is not healing. looking happy. I've got a and healing spell, but it only works on me. Okay, down to arc. Okay, um, I'm going to move 30 feet forward. If you want, If you want to be healed, don't walk too far away. All right. Um, instead of that, I'm actually going to plunge the sword to the ground again. Pull out okay. a javelin. Said there's what's and what's and what's now. So there are uh, cultists, zombies, and kobolds. Two of each. Okay. Well, since the kobolds are actually hitting me, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw a javelin at uh, uh, one in group cluster to the left because they're actually exposed. Okay. Uh, what's the range on that? I think it's 2060. Uh, the uh, for for a javelin it's thirty one twenty. Thirty one twenty. So you'll have a disadvantage on that. Okay, hang on a second. Can you move me forward to where I'd be within just within thirty feet of the cobalt? That one. Yeah. Because I know I can at least close that gap. A little bit. I uh, he's sixty five away. Sixty five away. Yep. So you'd still end up just shy of that range. Uh, if I move forward, hang on. Okay, if I were to move 30 forward, that would put me uh, parallel to that doorway, right? And bring you here? Yeah. Oh, no, that does pull it. That's just fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this at this point, killing it, it, I'm I'm raging, so I need to kill. Mm -hmm. Preservation is a secondary idea. So, uh, I will lob the javelin at him. <sighs> well, I attack, so I get to maintain my rage. <laughs> Alrighty. I plunge the sword into the ground after I get there. Let's just be clear about that. Okay. Not that I don't have my other option on my back. You're going to ruin your sword, dude. I didn't pay for it. What that ground ever do to you? <laughs> it allowed kobolds to be on it. <laughs> what moved toward me? Uh, that's a zombie, which misses. Because there's disadvantage. Bitch. Yay for my sister being awesome and giving me duel. <laughs> We'll explain later. Still misses. Ah, y'all suck. Just keep coming out here where I can see you. That, that is part of what I'm doing too. Well, at least at least they're being uh, at least they're growing some balls and coming at me in melee. Yeah. That's because the only ones that have ranged are the kobolds. I would say with that many people around me, the cope, I should have partial cover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if only it worked that way. So looks like the scimitar will hit. Scimitar will hit? Yep, for six points. Reduce to three? Correct. Okay. Uh, hey, guys, I'm not looking great. I told you to stay where you were. <laughs> 
And what I heard was blah, 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 boring, blah, blah. Ooh, yeah, that'll hit as well. For another five. <laughs> so, Ark Falls. I, I don't fall so much as slump. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's hoping you have another character idea ready. Because I'm <laughs> no, getting I close enough to pull you out. No, I do. And Russell. Ah, shit. Um, Intimidate them. <laughs> <laughs> I can try. Yeah, I can, I can them shout at them. And, can I shout at them in cultist? <laughs> cultist. Um, you haven't actually or? heard cultist. Do they, are, have I heard them no, speak at all? Let, N- not these ones, no. Okay. Even the one that was up there directing the others to come down? Yeah, not That's from the fun. range. Okay. You know, it's moments like these that make the half orc maybe an uh, arguably better option. <laughs> uh, <let's see. laughs> half orc is just Art a lot of their own orc. Go full orc um, if you're going to do orc. Yeah, but they don't get the I say no to death. Yeah, but full which orc seems is more silly. Yeah, Make a Goliath and say no to the next hit you get. A, a, a die roll. Yeah. I'll go ahead and drop a fairy fire on them. Okay. That whole group there. It's a DC. Well, I would think that was very pretty if I was awake. <laughs> now keep in mind, my shifting only drops if I die, but the rage drops. Two of them made it. Or what's, two of them, uh, what's the DC? We're afflicted. Uh, 13. 13? All right. So Zombie 2 and Cultist 1 are fairy fired. All right. And that'll be it for me. Okay. I'm glad that zombie number went down. Now, this is where you say you were only faking your death to lure him in. Lord Draho. Mayor setback. Okay. Um, the cultist that has the uh, fairy fire on him, I want to mm-hmm. shoot at him. Okay. Because that gives me advantage, right? It sure does. Awesome. Does that, does that cultist also happen to be the one with blood on his sword? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, he was the one that was just a little bit too far away. Okay, that hits. So what does fairy fire do? Gives advantage on uh, attacks. Okay. And can't be invisible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I did eight damage to him. Alrighty. He looks about as b- uh, bad off as the other cultist. Neither one okay. are looking very pleasant. Awesome. After we hit these guys, kill a few more of them. I'm going to charge in with my rapier and be a hero. <laughs> Frostgar. All right. Um, let me check my range real quick. So what is everyone playing exactly so I know what the rest of the party is? <laughs> I'm a sorcerer. Okay. What kind of sorcerer? A draconic one. Okay. A druid? Yep. What kind of druid? Uh, eventually going to be a moon druid. All right. Awesome. <clears throat> and I know we what got a warlock. What has hit that has fairy fire? The uh, zombie. So the zombie right. and the cultist. cultist. I'm going to ice knife the zombie. Okay. Nice. Uh, it's going to be a 19. That will hit. For seven points of damage. Okay. Don't forget Wait, the area effect. I was going to say, Ice Knife has a secondary area effect. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. You, do, you do damage to everyone within five feet of the target. Yep. So I take one failed death save. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the targets explode. Uh, each creature within five feet must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 cold damage. I automatically fail. <laughs> What's your DC? 12. And they both make it. 12. 
13, technically, because I forgot the plus. Well, let me double check, because the zombie the zombie has a negative, so it does not make it. Go ahead and uh, What about the one behind the zombie? Doesn't that take two? Oh, yep. Well, at least you maximized your uh, target. In, uh, Eight points of damage. All right. So that is Cobalt 9. It gets filleted by flinging knives. And Zombie 1 takes, you said 9? Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ice Knife's a great first, second level spell because it's the closest you get to an area of effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus, I am oh, got white scales for my Ice Dragon, and all my spells are ice. <laughs> <laughs> Navara. All right, I'm going to pop out, and we're going to Eldritch Blast the Cultist that is hexed. Okay. Uh, seven's going to be a miss. That is true. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward, uh, just to the edge of the building there. Okay. And I'm going to hold there. Ark, go ahead and give us that death roll. You know, that bear spirit that sent me on this quest is a dick. <laughs> it, it, it was the six. <laughs> okay. Uh, zombie one. Does he turn the bear guy into a zombie? The zombie's <laughs> not the one who hit me. <clears throat> My bad. Also, that's not, how, that's not how zombies work in this game. That's ghouls. No, but still, just be funny. Too bad it's not Barovia. <laughs> yeah, then a, then a Dryad would be like, here, have some power, and I'd learn Thorn Whip out of nowhere? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd permanently have Bark Skin on. Russell. Uh, let's see. Uh, Which one's very fired? The uh, far one? Uh, cultist one, and I believe zombie two. All right, I'll move up behind Navarro. I, I do have a backup character on standby if it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll fling a stone at it. Okay. Just given my play style, I always have a backup character prepared. Yes. Uh, let's see. How many YouTubers in the team of the uh, 20 to hit. That'll do. And we've got uh, ooh, about seven damage. And that will do. Thanks. Stone to the temple. He slumps and drops. Nice. Alrighty, anything else? That'll be it for me. Okay, skeleton one. Can you go mom's room? That's not going to do. Skeleton 2. Lord Draho. Yes, well, skeletons are pretty much useless for me, so back at the cultist. She wiggled away. She wiggled away. Hey, that's another wasted natural 20. <laughs> that it is. Unfortunately, it only had one hit point left. <laughs> yeah, well, well, let's see what I would have done. Nine damage anyways. Wouldn't even have been impressive. Not bad. Uh, so you shoot it through the eyeball. It comes out the other side of the head. <sighs> I hate when I use the good rolls on the dudes <laughs> that are almost dead. For Oscar. Okay, so are any of the two, what are they, skeletons? Yep, two skeletons in front, two zombies in the back. Are and a kobold way back there. Still have fairy fire on them? Uh, no, the skeletons did not. Uh, one of the zombies zomb did. Yeah. Zombie two. 
Yeah, that one's too far away. Uh, which one looks most damaged? Um, they're both about even with that. Right, a little hard to tell it. with all the rotted flesh. I'm going to throw another ice knife at the skeleton. Uh, left one or right one? The right one. Okay. Plus five. Eighteen. We'll hit. It takes six, and then the second one makes the deck save. Or, yeah. No, isn't that within five feet? No, he he meant the zombies, not the. Skeleton. Oh, zombies! Gotcha. That makes yeah, more sense. I was sense. just looking at that myself. <laughs> I'm like, why is he attacking our ally? Oh yeah, no, I meant the two standing next to each other. Okay, so deck save on the other one. Will not work, so go ahead and roll your six. Eight. Hmm, okay. And I feel very exhausted now. <laughs> Navara. Uh, everything's still up. Um... Not everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure. All right, so let's see. If I take an opportunity attack, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and get to arc. Mm hmm. That uh, would technically be two op attacks. Skeleton uh, and zombie. I could go over an extra space and that still is true. get there. Um, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Skeletons can't hit for shit. No, they can't. <laughs> and I'm going to attempt to medicine. Okay. To stabilize Ark. I swear to God, if you miss this roll by more than five. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might die anyway, so. What's this might? It's going to happen. <laughs> oh, uh... I guess you should have played a healer. Uh, 13. That'll do it. Arc is stabilized. Uh, and then I guess for my bonus action, I'll swap my hex to the skeleton that I ran away from. Okay. Really ran away, away. So Shut Arc up. is stabilized, but on the ground. <laughs> Brings us Look. to zombie one. Look, I'm only unconscious because... You were uh, briefly ran toward the danger. Ooh, that's gonna hit. Okay, uh, let me Ooh. check for my uh, concentration. Uh, I'm no longer concentrating on hex. Okay. And then uh, seven damage. Correct. As it just kind of body slams into you. Okay, uh, so that's four temp and three regular. Okay. Moves to the next skeleton or a zombie. Four, so he will attack on Russell. Don't think a 13 hits. Nope. Okay. Cobalt. Will also attack on Russell. Don't think an 11 hits. Nope. So it's Russell. Uh, is this a skelly next to me or a zombie? Uh, that is a zombie. Um... One straight above is a skelly, though, right? Correct. So I'm going to move up. Because that's not going to cause an opportunity, right? Correct. Right. And I am still chalet lead, correct? Mm hmm. So I'm going to take a whack at it with my quarter staff. And okay. Do them in. How about a 20 to hit? That'll do. And how about uh, six plus. 
Uh, six plus three. How about nine damage? Bludgeoning. Okay. Do, do, do. That is going to outright kill it due to its uh, vulnerability to bludgeoning. Breaks some bones. And see you know it. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think that's all. Okay. Skelly 2. Uh, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so 13 hit you, Froskar? Yep. Yeah. Froskar. Uh, the one in front of me, is it a zombie or a skeleton? No, nah, does a 13 hit you? Oh. You know what's funny? It does not hit me. Okay, that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Lord Draho. Okay, the one that attacked the uh, warlock up there, I'm going to take it out. Okay. Well, rephrase that. I'm going to attempt to take it out. Okay. 17. That will hit. 10 damage. Zombie 1, that will kill it. Awesome. I got your back. Thank you. Okay. Now, Froskar. <laughs> All right. Skeleton in front of me? That is correct. All right. I'm going to hit it with my quarterstaff first attack. Okay. Love you. That's five, six. 17. Do, do, do. That is skeleton, that will hit. Four plus three, seven. It's dead. Yeah, it is. And Navara. Uh, the zombie next to Russell still has fairy fire, correct? Yep, that is zombie two. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Eldritch Blast it. Okay. Love how we've been ignoring that. <laughs> <laughs> when he's the one that's glowing. <laughs> he's the least threatening. Uh, 19. Will hit. Uh, three damage. All right. Most of its flesh has fallen off. So when does it become a skeleton? <laughs> In because just a few more days. <laughs> uh, Ark is down but stabilized, so zombie two. Yeah, it's, um... I'll wager a 13 does not hit. Russell? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Cobalt. And a 13 again. Does not hit. Nope. Back to Russell. The AC is 14. <laughs> I'm going to take a whack at uh, zombie bro here. Okay. If most of his flesh is gone, does that count as a skeleton, though? No, uh, not quite. Yeah. It's got just enough padding. Uh, it was a bit chunky in life. Me too. Uh, it's a 17 <laughs> on the dice. So. That'll do. About... Eight more damage. And that will kill it. Nice. Which brings us back to Lord Draho. Ah, eh, shoot that one. Okay. Unless, how far away is he? Forty. Yeah, I wouldn't be able. I was going to say, unless I can just run up and stab him to look brave and heroic, but... Yeah, not quite. You can do it. Uh, Twenty-five to hit. Will so. hit. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum damage. So Four disappointed. <laughs> Four damage. It is still alive, but not yeah, looking pleasant. Yeah, I did pleasant. minimum damage. <laughs> Froskar. All right, I'm gonna ray of frost it. Okay. Uh, for twenty-one. Will hit. It takes two. It dies. <laughs> All right. Good job, everybody. Go team. <laughs> I'm going to come down from my tower, and as I walk forward, pat everyone on the back once, and then wipe my hand afterward. <laughs> uh, in these times of, of plague, you have to... No, 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 it's not that. It's just because you're all dirty and filthy. Make sure that you're washing your hands. In this time of plague, as our characters are definitely not social distancing now, <laughs> yes, move me oh, six feet away, please. But we are in a group of less than ten. 
I'm sorry. What I meant to say was, nah, nah. actually, I'm a bird. I, <laughs> I probably don't catch coronavirus, or if I do, I'm probably not affected by it. But, yeah, but knowing our luck, you'll get bird flu. Yeah, avian avian flu is probably worse. So uh, better not, watch not, out. Not the COVID flu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, my character is 20. I was if I was I was 19, I could have been COVID 19. But... <laughs> What do the cultists have on them? Uh, so the cultists uh, likewise have what the last one did, a uh, standard robe, leather mm-hmm. armor, and uh, scimitars. Um, toss me investigation checks for finding treasure on them. You guys enjoy doing that while I power nap over here. <laughs> a natural one not for investigation. Uh, if we're not resting, I'll go ahead and cure wounds on... I have a 12. Arc. Okay. I have a 16 for investigation. All right. First cultist then has uh, 20 copper. Second one has 9 electrum. Whoa. Oh, Man, are you making me have to get my... They're worth 5 silver... <laughs> you get seven HP back. Are we searching the houses while we did this investigation, or is that all outside? Yep, we'll, I was uh, just searching the corpses. We'll go ahead and count it for that as well. Um, the houses themselves are basically empty, um, very rotted wood on the inside. Even the uh, finer kind of mansions and uh, town hall in the upper left. Um, the the city itself, uh, town I should say, has been in disrepair for almost 100 years since the uh, war that happened in Raven's Bluff. Um, and no one's really come back out here to resettle it since then. can't imagine why. Yep. Um, by the, by the way, I, I want to say that once the healing magic uh, brings me up to seven, just out of instinct, uh, I... I stay, I jerk up and pull out one of my hand axes. Kill them all! <laughs> oh, we won. I like his enthusiasm. <laughs> so he's got what, a true warrior spirit. So what did we find in the gold and or the silver and stuff? So amongst everything, um, you have the nine electric pieces, nineteen gold. Okay. Um, 40, I rolled a 15 for my investigation. 42 total silver. Uh, I suppose that I will help with the investigation once I regain consciousness, and it's not worth a damn thing. <laughs> I, rolled a, I rolled a natural one. For the <laughs> to be fair, I lost a lot of blood. <laughs> and then 50 more copper. Okay, now let me bring out the calculator. I mean, if three finds anything, just let me know. So we know the 50 copper, we each get 10 copper. Mm -hmm. That's a quick one that even I can do. Um, 42. Uh, Let's see. How many hit points was uh, Ark restored? Seven. Perfect. (laughs) Just under half. Eight (laughs) apiece on the silver. Uh, this one's probably not going to be equal either. Yeah, three on the gold. <coughs> and how much is an Electrum worth? Five silver. Yep, half a gold piece. So... So nine electrum would be forty-five silver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's nine a piece on silver. So nine more silver each. Uh, do the cultists have anything on them, identifying marks or? Um. Still, oddly, no. Dog. No. No. Uh, no pamphlets. 
Nope. <laughs> uh, even even their robes don't seem to have normal like culty symbols on them. They're just kind of tattered black robes. Some, well, I do think we did our finish the job. There's some low budget cultists. Uh, <laughs> can't even yeah. afford propaganda. So uh, what, what's, the, what's the thing in the middle there? Is that look like steps going down? It is. Uh, it is a kind of tunnel into like a mine shaft area. So yeah, I, I don't think we're done. Well, I think a short rest would be well appreciated by most people in the party. Not me. I'm perfectly oh. fine. But. What do you think? Short rest for some heals and then back into it. Charge. Okay. <laughs> What I do. Well, I'm a it group is leader. ten thirty, so I don't know if we want to call it here for the week. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice the time. That, that's right. a good. That's a good time to Welcome do it. Welcome to D and D. Then we'll go ahead and stop here for now, and we'll pick back up uh, in the caverns of Sable Ridge next time. Awesome. Are yeah, we gonna do XP and level, or are we gonna do that after next time? Um, I'll go ahead and uh, well, since you guys are only taking a short rest, we'll do it after next time, unless you want to take a long rest currently. It's up to you guys if you want to wait a full eight hours. I just said short rest because. I mean, you just said, we have no idea what we're going into there, and if we if we run into something where we get overwhelmed, we could get lost, we could get trapped. Yeah. I'd rather put them there to fresh. Yeah, Fair I enough. have no yeah. spell slots right now, so long rest would be preferred for me. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Um, I will calculate all the uh, XP and send those out um, over Discord. i uh, let you guys know what you're at. Cool. Okay. okay. All right. Good game, everybody. Talk to you later. Right. Right. Good have a good one.